Yo, what? Wait, what episode? <laughs> Twenty. Yo, what? Is up, <laughs> Yo, what is up, Mercies? <laughs> We are back with another episode of Modcast. Episode number 20. 20, whatever. <laughs> Guys, we are in the new location, our new house. We have, um, if you guys have seen our YouTube videos, you guys know what room we're in. It's like a movie room. We've converted it into the podcast room. We, it, it looks pretty fucking clean. Yeah. It so, looks much nicer than the last place. Last place was just like our living room. <laughs> yeah. And we had people walking around, like the dogs yeah. were fucking up everything. Yeah, yeah. We had to like throw the dogs out. Yeah, so this is, like, I'm honestly really excited just to be back on the podcast. It's been three weeks. Yeah, sorry, and, guys. And we brought on Marco, the jacked Italian. What's up, guys? He's he's already been on the podcast. He was on it with uh, with Josh, Cousin Crypto. Yeah, and um, and then we did a late night one, and we got a little too drunk. Yeah, that. We said some stuff we shouldn't have said. Yeah. So we scrapped it. <laughs> yeah. We scrapped that podcast because we got, well, dude, honestly, like, it was people, pretty bad. I, people didn't like it that we scrapped it, but it just uh, it got out of hand. We no, we, it, it got out of hand. Not even the stuff that we like. Not even the stuff that we said. It was just not at the end. The energy was so bad because we were all coming down. I was coming down from from GHB because I was. I haven't drinking. taken GHB. Yeah, I was yeah, coming down from GHB, so I felt like shit. It no, was just me and so Marco bad. were the only one. We were coming up, and you were coming. down. I was coming down, and, and it you was were just, like, and these guys. Shut yeah, the fuck it was up. so bad. And me and Marco were just feeding off each other yeah it got, it got <laughs> bad all right but really quick guys we want to um we, you know, we do have a sponsor for this podcast it's Mo, it's, it's anabar so yeah marco's been chomp on it he's been eating that for we like, gave him this anabar <laughs> we were like all right don't eat this until the podcast starts <laughs> and as you can see there is one little cubic centimeter of anabar okay. left so okay they gave me this anabar 30 minutes ago and then <laughs> Went on Instagram I, the, and asked for topics. So yeah, the first bite though was so lethal. Like, wait, make sure so when you talk, it's like at this distance. Either that, or I can just turn your mic up, like right here. No, yeah, turn his mic good. up. Just you, turn wait, his which, mic up. Which mic is two? Two. two. I'll just turn yeah, it up to that's there. Good. So good. yeah, and yeah. Anabar is actually just restocked. So today, like as you guys are watching this, they are restocked. They've restocked some of the flavors. So if you guys want to get some, you guys know the code. It is code Mog M O G saves you like ten percent. I think. So, yeah. make sure you guys go get you some Anabars. Everyone fucking There's some new flavors them. coming, I think. Yeah. So some that we don't even know about. Yeah. There's like, I guess they got a new warehouse, and the reason why they haven't been in stock so much is because they got a new warehouse, and they've been like scrambling, but now they're like getting back on track. They got these new flavors, samples, and shit. So, yeah, yeah we're really excited. Yeah, that was my first Fruity Pebbles. It was really good. Yeah. I've only had like Cookies and Cream, and then the uh, like Cinnamon Toast Crunch one. Yeah. The, the I think the Fruity Pebbles one is the best. Yeah, really? Good. I think White Chocolate is. Yeah, that's why they're. Wait, all... So, what happened to is cinnamon and and peanut butter? Are they discontinued now? I'm not sure. No, they're redoing it. They're just covering it with. Oh, okay. They're just putting the coating the on coating it. on it. So rather than yeah, they're just putting the coating on it. So make sure you guys look out Those for that. Bomb. But Marco has just moved to Houston, like permanently, right? Yeah, the beginning of this month, I moved. I drove from uh, Florida. It was like twenty something hours worth of driving. So you're just like you, you know, you're done with school. Yeah, I and dropped you, out in February, and then I had to wait for my lease to end. Yeah, because I was I wasn't gonna spend an extra thousand dollars a month, and then I drove here with my uh, so my parents came to Florida, helped me pack up, and then we just drove me and my little brother, and then my parents drove the U-Haul. You rented a U-Haul, so yeah. you did the whole move yourself. Yeah, it was That's crazy, sick. dude. We did our move. We got a company. We had a Ford Focus. <laughs> no, no oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah. The Airbnb, like the first move yeah. that we did, we packed the Ford Focus with it. But this time, when we moved to this house, we had, like, dude, we hired, like, some company, and they came out with these three guys. Yeah. And they literally, like, packed up, like, we just told them, yo, grab, like, the, like, grab, like, the big shit, pretty much. Well, that was different, because at that point, the whole place was furnished. We bought furniture that that we wanted to move. But it's kind of funny that when we moved, when we initially moved to Houston, my entire life was packed into, like, two bags and a backpack. Yeah. Like, everything. I had one big bag big like bag and then a carry-on and my backpack and that was literally it we've literally accumulated so much shit in the, in the matter of a year yeah but you guys moved from home right yeah 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 so i was already living on my own so i had and like i'm addicted to shoes so i had like 70 something pairs of shoes yeah totally. did you have like, like the half the back of the original end. box like you yeah, had the box them all back oh, up yeah yeah i can't um so shoe I, man yeah if i lose the box like i lose value on the shoe so i was like yo my dad was pissed. I was just putting shoes in the U-Haul, and he was like, bro, what the fuck? Boxes like, of shoes. Yeah, it was a huge one, too. It was like, uh, 
It was like the, not the little U hauls. Like it was actually a big one. I mean, that's, that's a whole thing you do on the side is yeah, so like shoes. sneaker reselling. How much do you make doing that? If you don't mind me asking and telling fifty thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> so I was you, you do don't a, you don't have to say if you don't want to. Well, I was gonna do a challenge kind of thing where it was like turning. Originally, it was gonna be turning a hundred dollars into into a uh, thousand. Like oh, a I've seen that. Yeah. And I was gonna do it in a week because like it was, it, but that ended up being too easy. So I was like, "It's too easy." Yeah, bro, it's the easiest job in the world. I walk in the Nike outlet and I make like six hundred bucks. Like literally today, before I was gonna go, like before I came here, I was supposed to send out two pairs of shoes to StockX. So I went to. I'm starting this new series. Five, five hundred to five thousand in a month. Is this on YouTube or TikTok? In a month uh, on uh, YouTube. I'm okay. probably gonna do a little bit on TikTok, but like I want to. So do this it on series YouTube. is for your YouTube. Yeah. So I bought five or six pairs of shoes with like two hundred dollars at the Nike outlet. Sold two pairs um, a couple days later, and I'm already up like three or four hundred dollars. And I have to ship out two more pairs. You got six pairs of shoes for two hundred bucks. Yeah, at and, the outlet. At the outlet. Yeah, at the outlet. I got a brand new pair of Vapor Maxes and like a pair of Jordans, and then like some like miscellaneous like blazers and shit. How'd you get Vapor Maxes for what like fifty, sixty bucks? For yeah, forty something. How, bro? Uh, so what happened is, so Nike does this thing called like refurbished. So they take like shoes that someone bought and then like they either wore them once or tried them on and didn't like them, send them back. And then they put them in like this eco-friendly box center of the outlets and they're like a third of the retail price. Mm. And then you just sign up with Nike for a new email. So every time you sign up with an email, you get 10% off or 15 and you get an extra 15% off. <laughs> so and I have like a you're like extreme, was, extreme couponing type No, because I was dude. asking him about this. I'm like, how do you, how do you know... <clears throat> Like what's going to be trending? Like you know that if you buy this pair of shoes and you can get it for cheap. I was asking you about this in Florida. Yeah, in Miami. And you basically just said like you just got to be in. You just got to be in the culture. And yeah. you've been you've been into sneakers for like years now, so you just know what's popping and what's not. Versus to someone like me and Sush. I mean, we like shoes, but we don't know about all like this trending and that trending. So. For me to see you buy a pair of shoes for like forty bucks and know that they're gonna resell for like three hundred, it's just like what the fuck? How do you know that? Well, you okay? So you got to get lucky. Obviously, like if you walk into Nike, they might not have the shoe that you're looking for. But um, so every shoe has like a serial number, or like a a number inside the shoe that you can look up on StockX or Goat or an eBay, and then you can see what shoes are selling for like comparatively. And then like so on StockX, they have like highest bid. So like for a brand new pair of shoes. Someone can be like, yo, I'm willing to pay 250 So if any one of you guys will accept that 250 offer, mm -hmm. like you can send it in right. instantly. So I'll walk into Nike, walk through the aisles, check the barcodes and shit. And in the beginning, I would literally sell anything. Like I would, I would take like four or $5 profit. Like even if I was only gonna make four or five bucks, I would take the time out of my day to do it because the more sales you make, the less percent in fees you pay. So it starts off like 9% and then it goes down to eight. The more and more you sell. On, on StockX. Yeah, on StockX. Okay. So it went, it got to a point where, like, Josh had seen it, my uh, videographer. He had seen like two or 300 pairs of shoes in my apartment. Yeah. Because all my roommates had moved out. And I was like, whatever, like, I'm just going to take this over and like, turn it into a business. And that's how I was paying rent. That's how I was doing everything before, like, fitness stuff ticked up, uh, popped off. Yeah. Yeah. I think in total, I've probably made like 80 or 90 grand oh. in, in six months. That is Damn, so fun, bro. Yeah. yeah. It was so crazy. And I literally started off with like eight or eight or nine hundred dollars. Cause I took my rent for that month. I had watched a YouTube video about reselling and I was like, fuck it, like I'm gonna get into it. Cause if you buy a pair of shoes from Nike in particular or like uh Adidas, you have thirty days or ninety days to return it, but like thirty days to pay my rent. So I went on the like the second or third day, bought a bunch of these shoes, and whatever didn't sell by the end of the month when I needed to pay rent, I would go back and like return the shoe and then like two or three days later it would get charged back on my card and mm -hmm. I pay rent. So my first month, I think I made like two or three grand. So I like tripled my money at that point. And I was like, fuck, like this is addicting. It's actually working. And I just kept doing it and yeah. kept doing it. Dude, well it's it's like luck, but um because Eric Eric doesn't like resell, but he'll sell his shoes when he's done with them. Yeah. So he had the off white volts. Yeah. Like the Nike the Air Force Ones, the off white volts. Those are clean. He had them and Billy Eilish wore them and then gonna wore them <laughs> and so the the like it's weird because these influencers are like artists or whatever they the post Scott they effect. post a picture with them with the shoes and then the value fucking skyrockets yeah. 
because everyone's like, yo, Billy Eilish. is popping now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so like, Eric saw that, and then he immediately, like, hopped on Grailed and sold those, like, just because he knew he could make, a, like, a quick buck. Yeah, it's like the Travis Scott effect. People will see, like, Travis Scott wear anything, like, fucking Crocs. Instantly, Crocs are worth more yeah. money. <laughs> Damn, Like, dude. shit like that. Yeah. That's, I used to just feed off that hype. So, like, uh, there's this pair of shoes called, like, the Newcastle Dunks. I had a pair. I think I paid, like, $500. Like, Travis Scott wore them. The next day, they were worth, like, 1100 And I was like, fuck it. And I sold them. Dude, that's nuts. Yeah. yeah. It's w- worth it. Wait, so I noticed, well, you came in here, you told me you broke your wrist because I broke my ankle too. Yeah. So what happened? I was skateboarding like an idiot. But you, you, you're you, a good skateboarder though. That's At what I, I was under the impression that you were a good skateboarder. <laughs> At one point I <laughs> you was. You just cooked him. <laughs> yeah, I thought dude. you were good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, at one point I was. So when I was in high school and shit, I used to skateboard all the time. Uh, probably until like my freshman year of high school when I broke my back. Up until that point, like I was skateboarding all the time. And I started when I was probably like eight. So I was good, and then I was at the Naka Warehouse, and they had a bunch of skateboards. So I was like, fuck it. Like, let me pick it up again. Let me start shred. Yeah, yeah. Shred. I was like, let me shred, bro. So I one day went by. I was getting good. Started, like, hop ollieing over curbs and shit, like, learning how to do, like, heel flips and pop shoves, 180s and shit again. So I was like, fuck it. Like, let me just let me keep doing. Literally the next day, I went to go do a pop shove, and my feet landed way too close together, and the board shot out from under me, and my fingers, like, bent back and, like, touched my forearm. You're good. <laughs> Wait, the so light moved a little. So it it so it went like this. Yeah, your yeah, fingers yeah. touched your hand, forearm. Not like a hundred percent touched my forearm, but like they went like this and mm-hmm. then like hyper extended the this, this way. Holy fuck. And I chipped a piece of the bone off like in my wrist. Holy fuck. Yeah. And then Dude, I'm gonna I've got a bunch of vials of BPC and T V five hundred. I mean let we me could inject do that. your wrist. We could do that. Yeah. I'll let you do it. Hundred percent. Dude, I, I that sucks though because I heard skateboarding is like really fucking good cardio. No, it's, yeah, it is. It's dude. fun too. Yeah, yeah, it is because I'll just like for hours, like I would just skateboard. Like I was literally in the Naka warehouse for like two or three hours, just skateboarding, dripping sweat, and they're like, "Yeah, what the fuck is up with this?" Yeah, guy? but you don't even think of it as like that's the because it's fun. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, well, yeah. that's like it's like playing basketball or something. Yeah, like yeah, or like yeah, bike I played riding. basketball the other day with broken hand, yeah, or broken wrist. Yeah, I, I gotta get out to the Naka warehouse. Seems dope, bro. We have a whole gym set up. You guys could slide whenever. We could hit a miscellaneous upper body. Work out. Damn. Right? We'll go there after. Is it, this is it a podcast. good gym? <laughs> yeah, they have dumbbells up to one twenties, a bunch of benches, and then like that's all I need to hear. <laughs> chest press machines, um, lat pull down machine, cable row machine, Damn. Deck, deck fly. Like it's a lot. As long as there's AC, bro. Yeah. Yeah, there's no AC. Uh-huh. It's a fucking <laughs> warehouse, bro. Dude, I'm on trend. I can't not have AC, bro. I'll be sweating my ass. <laughs> yeah, off. but then you'll look lean after. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We'll drop all the water. Yeah. And then I'll just plus it makes around. you feel good. Especially after a long night of drinking or something, when you go and sweat the next day. Remember Mexico, where I was, you were like, why do you want to go to the gym so bad? And we had been drinking every day, and I'm yeah. like, bro, I got to sweat the toxins out. Yeah. And I literally felt like a new man coming out of that gym every day, because it was like 100 degrees there. In the gym, it was 100 degrees, and there's like no AC, and it was just, just dripping out of me. I probably smelled like fucking vodka as I was sweating. <laughs> it was just tequila. It's just like dripping yeah. out. You're like licking your sweat. You get a buzz. <laughs> Ew. It's like that bad. That's disgusting. But the gym <laughs> looked dope, dude. It was like glowing neon lights and shit. Yeah, that, it was a sick gym. Shout out Jim Tulum. Everyone wanted me to go to the Tulum Jungle Gym. Yeah, I, was, I asked why didn't you go to that shit. I mean, it's cool for the content, but all the weights there, in terms of like practicality, they're all made out of wood. So you have a d- you have a dumbbell that's like this <laughs> fucking big and it weighs like twenty pounds. You know you can't. Yeah, but it's like, just for content. But Jim Tulum well, like is one actually. Day. I know. Or like an afternoon okay. The workout. one day I don't know if I told the story, but the one day that I went to Jim Tulum, I l- I left my phone in a Mexican taxi, which is probably the worst fucking thing ever, and I have no <laughs> idea how I got it back. Well, I mean, I had. There's no data there, like none of us had data, and I realized I didn't have my phone as we were walking. A, to um the the tulum jungle gym and um i think hannah had her find my iphone thing yeah and we checked it and my phone was fucking elsewhere bro it had just gone miles away by that point and i'm like all right that's it i gotta figure out like i gotta buy a phone here or something but imagine buying a phone in mexico yeah that'd be kind of legendary story yeah, it, would well, it would be like SMS. Like, I don't think it would stop. No one though. had an iPhone there. Like, if you're a local, no one has an iPhone there. Yeah, because I was thinking to myself, oh, yeah, like, no like, <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, my SIM card's gone. My fucking, my Venmo, my PayPal, all my Bitcoin, all that stuff is vulnerable. 
on this one device. And I was just, I started to go through it in my head. I didn't realize how dependent my entire life yeah, was wait, bro, on this I'm device. Thinking about it because you just mentioned Bitcoin. I'm thinking about like Coinbase on my phone. Dude, my, my, you my, log out or like my two factor account? authentication though, like the amount of shit that I would have had to go through. Cause when you log on to Coinbase, it asks for the two factor app yeah. with the code. It just would have been a shit show, bro. My oh, Coinbase, yeah. my Binance. I actually don't think you would have been able to get it back. Your it, Coinbase, at least. That would have been... Because my Coinbase is my email. My, my two-factor is is email, and then they also send me a text. Oh, yeah, and then you had... Yeah, no I so, like, if I don't have a phone, it's like, how the fuck am I... Just, Wait, no, you can just transport your phone number, right? Or you need the SIM card for that. I think shit. I might need the SIM card. Regardless, yeah, it would have. I would have still been dealing with it to this day, like, recovering everything. Yeah. You'd be, like, in the hole, bro. So, like, how'd you get it back? Um, luckily Val was fluent in Spanish and she had the head of the taxi company that we decided to go with. Yeah. She had his WhatsApp number and we found this restaurant with Wi-Fi and just, she said, can we please just sit here for the Wi-Fi? My friend lost his phone and we ended up getting it back. They like dropped it back at the house, but I was damn. So you got really bad. lucky. You got yeah. really lucky. That thing probably goes for like a hundred pesos over there in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> And then they find out what's in the inside, and they just then it goes for a million Bitcoin. pesos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, facts. So, we got a new house. We want to talk about that. Oh yeah, guys. Um, well, yeah, I feel like there's not much else to talk about, just other than because this is like the po- the podcast channel. But like, yeah, we have um, like we're, we're renting. Yeah, we're we were renting this house. We've had a couple issues, like with the AC. You want to talk about that, bro? Because oh. it's not. It hasn't been an issue for me. Yeah, it was mainly me and Eric, and then it was just me. But the, I mean, basically, long story short, the AC in my room just wasn't working. And I would set the temperature down to like 70, and I would wake up, and it was like 81 in my room. Literally 81 in your room. Yeah, in my room. And it would wake me up pretty early because basically as soon as the sun rises, my room starts heating up because it's getting hit by sun. And so you're in like the roof. The roof is right above you, so it's like seeping through. That's yeah. why I think my room stays so cool. It's because like you're down. on a lower floor. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it. And anyway, they've come over. The AC people have come over a couple times. They don't speak a lick of English, but it seems to be somewhat fixed. But sometimes my room still gets up to like 78. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't I don't really know. It's but. weird. It's like I'm not an AC guy, but like there's three compressors. There's three separate AC compressors and they all like do different locations of the house. So but they don't correspond with each other. Yeah. Like my room, yeah, I can change so it weird. and it like affects Eric's room or it'll affect like the guest room. And then yeah. you change the thermostat in the living room. It affects upstairs. Yeah, it's it's weird. like, what the fuck? It's weird. I hope uh, our landlord watches my videos because I, I don't know how he got my channel. I think my realtor gave him my channel. Um, or maybe he just looked up your name. And But I feel like if I looked up Brandon Bannock on YouTube, I don't think that would pop up. Maybe on Instagram, but you think he's savvy enough? He's like, he's super Chinese. Not like not to be like not not that it's bad. <laughs> you're I'm you're just about saying. to get us evicted, bro. <laughs> Brandon Bannock. Well, I'm Korean, so my mom's Korean, so. But see. he's he's I don't know how savvy he is. Yeah, like the first thing that comes up is a sush video. Fuck. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Damn. So yeah, he definitely yeah. But so yeah, he watches my YouTube channel. I don't know if he watches the podcast. Hope hopefully not. If you are watching DJ, we love this house, man. Yeah, it's really good. I'm not really mad about the AC. <laughs> We're not mad about the AC, man. You're great. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so far so so good. It's just like more square footage though, so it's more shit to worry about. I walked in this place and I was like, "Yo, what the hell?" We def- have two front doors <laughs> for reference. Yeah, I don't I don't doors. get that. It's but a Texas. Like it. th- every single fucking house at least on this side of the neighborhood has it they have they have walk into the courtyard and then you walk into the house it's weird i don't yeah, get yeah you guys have like a whole like exercise room that like leads into the house too so it's like yeah. why do you have two front doors that could have been more house space not that you need it though this is what like i think it's a million square it's 5, feet 50, yeah 5100 yeah that i mean I, it's not living space? no that's living space holy shit yeah it's big but at the same time it's not super huge yeah i wouldn't say it's a mansion no yeah. yo this is not a mansion it's be- a it's it's not a mansion size, but it's a it's it has mansion quality uh, inside. You know what I mean? It's a very nice house, but it doesn't have the size of like Homie, a fucking mansion. My apartment is six hundred and twenty four square feet. Yeah, and that's it's the you're size down of this bad. room. You're yeah, down bad. You guys <laughs> live in a mansion. You guys live in a kingdom for me. And you said, wait, so well, we're not gonna get into numbers, but you said that 
like what I pay personally, what I pay in rent is it's, the same that is what, what you I pay yeah. in the apartment. But yeah. that's crazy because we rented the last place we rented was 1900 square feet. So about three times the size of your apartment. Yeah. And it was $1,900 a month total. My rent is like 14 and then I have to pay for electricity and um, like Wi-Fi and cable and shit. So obviously I don't buy cable. Who the fuck watches TV? Yeah. But we and this guy, this guy just told us he made 90 grand from shoes. And then I'm like, bro, why didn't you pay a little bit more and get a bigger place? He's like, ah, I just don't want to spend that extra couple hundred. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm like, the, the, bro, the, the money I made from shoes is like invested, obviously, like into my future and then like paying rent. That's another like thing I want to fucking things. talk about with you, bud. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember in Miami, I was like, oh, so what do you do? Like, you got all this money coming in. What do you do? Do you like invest it? You're like, yeah, actually, I do. I said, what do you invest in? And you're like, I put about half of it into Ethereum. And I'm yeah. like, bro, I actually, that I, is the riskiest that you're like, yeah, I don't keep in the bank. I keep most of it in Ethereum. No, he just, he was no, telling I, me I just before the podcast, it. he just made a nice dollar. Yeah, I, sold I know. My, I mean, I sold my Ethereum. I it is out risky. A lot. It I is risky. Out a risky. Lot, That's all I'm saying. It's risky. I, well, no, I, believe that, I believe that Ethereum is like a ma massive part of our future. And I think that this is so funny because on the last podcast, he was like, I don't know the fuck. Like, I don't know crypto <laughs> no, at all. No, and now he's like, he talked to cousin crypto once and he's like, yeah, bro, actually, I pray to Ethereum every yeah. night. Ethereum is the future. It's the way nah, I, <laughs> I'm coughing now. You guys make it's it actually. But the, the market lately has been fucking going oh, yeah, hard. Crazy. I was talking yeah. to, I was talking to um, Josh the other day. And he's been doing crazy shit. Like he streams his on his Twitch now. Yeah, dude, he, he just like bought streams. a twenty thousand dollar NFT. Abby, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, he's profile uh, picture. He's doing he's doing huge things, and if he believes in it, I'm gonna believe in it. So that is true. Also, like, I've been doing actually a little bit more research now, and <laughs> Ethereum is like definitely gonna impact. Well, what's his? Because he was real big into Solana. Yeah, I don't is know. He still big into that? I don't know. I know that he's like gonna believe in that for a really long time. I don't know if he's buying more or just waiting, but I definitely think that he's still. Because I thought the way he put it was that it could be like a, like Ethereum part two, but better. I'm not Where's really, he at? He's in. Uh, so he moved to L.A. to live at home for a little bit and then he might be come visiting me soon. So, yeah, we got to get him back on when the market. When yeah, the, I was going to say you guys can get a good when the market's popping pod. again because he's been, dude, dude, I've been seeing bro. He was in an iDubs video. No, yeah, 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 yeah. He was in an iDubs video. He's been like, like he's in it with like Logan Paul or something. Yeah, like talking. isn't he twenty? Yeah, <laughs> dude. Like I, w I saw his story oh, and like he was. I was just like, holy shit, this kid. This yeah. kid's blowing up. So yeah, yeah not nah, like love this kid, but um, he's been doing some crazy things. Like he was on like the Sync podcast too. He was yeah. at like this party with like a bunch of those like LA people or whatever. Yeah. Like clowning Bryce Hall. Um. <laughs> He was hanging out with like Logan Paul was, yeah, he did like I a, I saw that. so yeah. So what he was telling me is what happened is, uh, there was this cryptocurrency. I'm not really sure of the name, but, um, Logan Paul or whatever was like part of it somehow, like doing like voiceovers for like cartoons. And they yeah. asked him to like do a voiceover. And then the iDubs guy like said that he owned that it. He was the owner of this coin yeah. that like got rug pulled or some shit. Yeah. And, and like tried to blame him. And he was and like, Josh was like, the shut the fuck? fuck up, dude. Dude, Josh's response to that was so funny. Not yet. He's I like, you kid. fucking fool. I don't own this coin. Yeah. I like iDubs though. I, I have to watch that video if it's still up. I don't know. Yeah. It might be, but. Remember Content Cop? Yeah. Those yeah. were like, dude, I used to watch so those like funny. fucking crazy. He the right, the rice gum Content Cop. Yeah. And he's like Asian Jake Paul classic jesus christ but yeah, yeah. No, oh, wait does. how do we just get into crypto oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah, we were yeah, talking yeah. About, we it were sucks because i bought i bought ethereum like when the whole market was crashing a month ago or whatever i bought ethereum at seventeen hundred dollars but i was i was too scared to buy more i think yeah. i only bought like one ethereum or half an ethereum or something because i'm like uh, i don't know no and then it fucking skyrockets and i'm just thinking Bro, so have seen this around coming. around that same time, I didn't buy any at all. I had bought a lot of Ethereum because I was like, I'm going to buy it's a lot coming of back up. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yo, it's going to come back up. It's going to come back up. And it did. And I made a decent, a pretty decent amount of money. And then uh, I was like, well, it's been uptrending for like eight to 10 days at this point. I was like, I feel like it's going to go back down. Let me, uh, I'm going to sell off and then I'll just like buy more. But my problem is like I'm all or nothing, which is like a big issue with me. So I sold all of it instead of keeping. I think I kept like three or four Ethereum. And it kept going up. And it kept going up. <laughs> so. See, that's why I don't, dude, you just put it into words why I don't fuck with swing trading and I'm more about holding. Like 
I'm too scared to, I'm always thinking, okay, if it's going up, why would I sell? Because it's like FOMO. See, like, what if it problem, keeps going up? My problem is the opposite. I see it going up and I'm like, fuck yeah, I made like a thousand dollars. Like, mm-hmm. let me sell. And then like two days later, I would have been up like 3000. Just like. Yeah. Yeah. So you sell too quick. Yeah. My problem is I'll sell too quick, but. I don't know. I saw it going up for like 10 or 12 days in a row and I'd called Josh and I was like, yo bro, like <laughs> I just sold my Ethereum. Uh, it was going up. He was like, yeah, I definitely think it's going to go down a little bit, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up higher. And then it literally exactly what happened. And so I sold it. It went down like a hundred, two hundred dollars. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like I sold like I made the right me. move. Then boom, like two or three days later, it was like $3,100. Yeah. And, and then, then you I buy back that. in. Yeah, I got to fucking text in. Josh, bro. I gotta tell I'm telling you, dude, he's a fucking crypto genius. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's been in it since he was like 16, right? Yeah, he started like when Bitcoin was in a bull run last time. So that was like when I was in high school, maybe like a sophomore. No, before that, because last time Bitcoin was in a bull run, that was like, I know what you're talking about. And that was 2017. But he said he was doing shit in 2016. Yeah. Like, so I guess, yeah, fucking long time ago. Yeah. Jesus Wait, Christ. really quick, fellas, I have a confession. <laughs> um, Back, I haven't, I have, because you guys know I had a nicotine problem and I quit. For like, and James helped me quit. I quit for like six or seven months. I was really good. And then we went to Mexico and we were all ripping it. Yeah, and dude, it, like, it was right. bad. There were the vapes everywhere and I started ripping it and I was like, oh, bro, I'll be chilling. I'll just go home and kick it. Like, yeah, it, it, I can kick the nick again. Like, no problem. And then I started like buying my own. So I'm back on the nick. <laughs> um, I haven't seen like, I, I don't know if I, I can quit, but it, I don't want to. You know, yeah. it's like one of those things. Like, I know I can do That's it. That's what all addicts sh- say. No. Yeah, you do. All I don't need no, no, I can quit whenever <laughs> no. I want. <laughs> that sounds, no, that no, that's sounds what like say. what people who smoke weed say. People who smoke yeah, weed bro, are always like, that. bro, I don't need to smoke weed. I just need it to fucking wake up, go to bed, do work, eat, like, No, everything. that's the thing. Is like, I, like, if I wanted to quit, I could quit, yeah. but I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, you went cold turkey last time. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. That's what I did when I quit. I quit uh, freshman year of college. Uh, New Year's I put that shit down I didn't touch it for like a year and a half and then I was like fuck it like I, I was dieting at that point and I was like super hungry and I was yeah. like I know this shit's gonna kill my hunger and I was chiefing like disposables in like a day at this point full dispo like thousand hits bro gone. at this point it's not even a hunger thing like I just like doing it because it's second nature for it, you yeah, to pick it up it's, and hit it. yeah it's just it's like, something to it's something to do <laughs> yeah it, exactly it's something to do and so I tell these, you guys let's go no, do fun I see, shit <laughs> I like see, nah I sit in the house all day why dude, would I need a big house this has like two thousand puffs on it and I had I got two of them like five days ago because they had to buy one get one half off so how could I not so <laughs> I got two of them at this vape shop and. I went through them both in like five days, so four thousand rips in five days, and I went oh back. My God. I went back to the vape shop, and he was like, "Damn, you're already back!" Like, kind of making me feel like shit. And I was like, and "Yeah, you're like, shut the fuck up, dude. Just give me <laughs> yeah. my fucking he, nicotine." Yeah, it's like, bro, I'm trying to, you know, like, so I'm I giving you ask for the fucking judgment. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, um, he's like, stressful week, huh? And I'm like, nope, man. I just, I <laughs> this got is nothing, the way I am. I got nothing better to do. See, the thing is with me and nicotine is like, if I'm doing, if I'm occupied doing stuff. I can go multiple days without hitting it, and then I'll be like, hmm, I kind of just accidentally quit. Yeah. But with you, it seems like you go cold turkey, which I'm like, damn, for months. But then when you get back into it, you go so hard. Dude, it's I'm honestly like, like bro. Me, it's like me binging. Like, Dude, that's like me with food. I was yeah, going to say, like, like, I'll food. be cutting for a month, and then that one day, like, you just can't control it. Like, when we were in Miami, it was so, so fucking terrible. Oh, my God. Because with me, I can't, like, I can't. I wouldn't be able to even hit nicotine that much if I tried because it would make me sick. Mm-hmm. Like I'd get nauseous and stuff and I would just feel like shit. But I mean, sometimes after a lift and stuff, you know. Yeah, it feels nice. It feels nice. But like for like what? you said, when you're occupied, you don't think about it. I'm the opposite. Yeah. Cause when I'm doing stuff, I want to have it next to me. Mm. Like if I'm if I have a if I have a task to do, I want to have that next to me to like Well, that's different. If you're like at your computer like doing work or something, but I'm saying if you're like it's especially when I travel, except in Mexico. <laughs> but like when I was with my parents, I didn't really hit it at yeah. all because it's just like is that like a you don't I was just show doing your stuff. Though? No, like no, I just didn't think about it. Oh, okay. I didn't crave it, which is weird because it's addictive. But then I came back here and I saw you hitting it, and I'm like, all right, here we go again. Yeah. So it's just an endless cycle. You're single now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's a transition. Yeah, that was a nice segue. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, we're not gonna get too much into it, but. I had a couple people already, dude, literally it happened yesterday. 
Um, people have already picked up on it. Yeah. Jeez. Bro. Uh, Avery and I split up. It, um, you know, shit happens, but we split up and like, I literally already had DMs today saying like, yo, are you guys good? Did you guys split up? Cause we have broken up once before. Um, but this time it's like, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm almost positive it's for good. And like, you are positive. Don't yeah, say almost No, positive. yeah, I am positive. But like, I just, just for her sake, I just want to throw it out there that like Avery didn't do anything yeah, wrong. Yeah, she didn't do anything wrong. She's a wrong. really great person. So it was literally, it was literally, she did nothing wrong and it was just me kind of just wanting out. Yeah. I just didn't want to be in yeah. the relationship anymore. But, um, my advice though, because I did want to say like the reason why, when I got back together with her and like, I know you guys probably feel this too. Cause you were telling me about it. When I got back together with her after the first time we broke up is because I was just like super lonely, you know? And I, and I had those like mixed feelings where it was like, I want to like be, I want to be in a relationship again because yeah. I was like, I was almost like in a low point, not necessarily like a low point, but like I was lonely and like, I was like pretty vulnerable. So I was like, fuck dude. Like I really miss her. Well, it's just that when, like when she's gone, you only feel all the positive feelings that you felt. So you miss her. But then after a few weeks of being back together, it's like, it reminds you of why you broke up in the first place. Yeah. And, and it's like, that's exactly what all right, happened. This is just going to keep happening until I cut it off for good. Yeah. And then when I, I was like telling my parents, I was on the phone with my parents about it yesterday. Um, and they were like, yeah, like you, like you have to go through with it. Cause obviously whether or not the breakup is like good or bad, like you're going to miss her. Like yeah. that's just how it is because you've built that connection. So it's like you have, you can't, if you guys are ever like thinking about, I don't know, like, if you don't, if you know you're going to get yourself into, like, the same situation, you just have to think, like, it's going, it's, the same shit's going to happen, like, I don't know, that's kind of just my take and don't on it. text her after. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also, I don't know about you, but, like, for me, for example, it'd be, like, the idea of you moving on is cool, but the idea of her moving on is just not okay, and that's how you know, like, you're like, oh, fuck, like, am I back together with her for the wrong reasons? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like when you think like of her moving on versus you moving on, you're like, yeah. oh shit, like she's going to replace me. Yeah. And you're like, oh fuck, like I shouldn't let that happen. Like, let me get back together with her and like see if it works. Yeah. And then yeah. you're just like, and that's kind of how it was I've, the I've first been guilty time. of that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No. So like, I don't want to see her with another guy. So oh, let me fuck that. Bro. that yeah, that's that's kind of how it was with the, with the yeah. first time. And it's also like, you're like having such a large presence on social media. It's like people are like, oh shit, like I saw your girl with this guy. Yeah, send me, me sending him. you pictures of them. Yeah, and it's like, or like, there's all follow yeah, there's them a, on Instagram and like you'll see like Avery on a story yeah. with like another guy. And then they'll send it to you and be like, yo, bro, like did you see this? And it's like, yo, yeah. please don't send me that shit. Yeah, that's literally like it already happened. Yeah, yeah, that's and what I, I'm saying. And, and I was just like, hey man, or it was actually my sister. And I was like, hey, I don't really like, I don't want <laughs> to see that. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, fuck, I was going to say something, but I told, oh, I will say this though, because of my presence on social media and the fact that I do the way that we do our videos, it's like literally our, our whole entire life. Mm -hmm. I do think that in the future, I'm going to like keep that part of my life. Like let's say I do get in another relationship in a year or two or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to keep that part like That's what I do. pretty fucking. Yeah. <clears throat> I like, don't post any pictures with my girl. I'm going to keep it really private. Um, just because it, that was a, like, that was almost one of the reasons why I was like, should I break up with her is because, or should we split up is because like the presence that we had on social media, I almost felt like you guys would also be like kind of, I don't know. <laughs> so she's like, yo, like part she's of the not relationship. Just my girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah like, it's like followers are part of my relationship. Yeah. Because you guys are weird. so invested into, into us. So, yeah. you know, that's, it is what it is. So, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's kind of different for me and Hannah because she has such a presence on social media too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do I keep that private? You know? Yeah. That's, uh, that's what's fucked. That's why I'm like, I would, I like the whole industry dating thing. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how I, I would, would ever be able to do it. Shit. I don't think I would do it. I would never do that shit. But well, you seem to, well, you guys kind of came up together. So yeah. it's a little different. Both of us didn't really have a following when we started. So it's like, yeah, I'm not going to break up with her just because now we have a following. Yeah. You know, like, ah, you're in the industry now. Peace. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a little different, but like pursuing someone else in the industry, like obviously you know, hooking up with them or whatever is, would be cool. Cause like, I mean, if they're in the fitness industry, they're going to be attractive most likely. So like hooking up with them eh. is cool. <laughs> yeah. Eh. There, yeah. Eh. You got to be either really handsome or like, I don't know, really hot. Usually. Yeah. Or really funny like me. And I'm also a little bit. Or handsome. like, 
<laughs> yeah, a little bit. But uh, you know what I mean? I think that when it comes to... Um, it just keeps going on and off. It's doing a cycle. I think it's because the it. I think it's because it's the purge is that the, what they were, what they were talking about. Because the compressors can't run the fan on multiple things. Just let it go through its thing. I feel like when it comes to like fitness guys versus fitness girls, for a guy like they got to be like at least like somewhat attractive. Not that I'm attracted to dudes or whatever, but like they kind of have to be. Yeah, you have and to. Then, you can't. But they also have to have a personality. Where I feel like girls in the fitness industry, especially if they don't have like an uh, like a active Instagram where it's like they're answering questions on stories yes. and shit or like doing YouTube. A lot of that is like very superficial. And that's where it's like, where, oh yeah, tits and food, like <laughs> the burger. Oh shit. Like, a million likes. And that's where the and that's where monetization I was gonna say how to monetize your content as a female is a lot harder than it is for a guy because most of your followers as a female, not for every girl, yeah. but most of your followers as a female, it's going to be guys looking at your body. But I think that's where the, right. that's where the, okay, not to sound like an asshole, but where the lesser attractive females prevail. Cause it's like, if you're a really good looking yeah. girl, a lot of the girls are gonna be like, oh shit, like I don't want to follow her. I don't fuck with her because guys are just following her because she has a nice body. Dude, I've literally had girls say that to me. Like, yeah. oh, I don't follow so-and-so because she makes me insecure. Do yeah, but then her? I feel like if you're not as attractive and you're like maybe like a seven. Right. Right? But like you have a fitness body, but you're... And you have a really good personality. is like a seven. Yeah. And you build that shit through like TikTok opposed to like Instagram. It's more of like, okay, yeah, you can monetize that because people are fucking with your personality and you're also not a threat to their ego. Because I yeah. feel like girls are way more like... No, I, I can't hang out with them because I don't want to be like the the ugly girl in the friendship. Yeah, opposed to guys, right. like we don't really give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, think, standing next to you two, I'm like, fuck these roids. <laughs> but do you think it's a thing though, where like girls are? Well, I mean, if a girl is that insecure, just because someone is is just like better looking than you, you think they're really not following? Like, yeah, like let's say, they, let's say they not that they're not following, but they're not. They're, okay, so when it comes to like fitness, not fitness, but like everything, influencer stuff in general, it's like who uses your code, who interacts with your content, who watches your videos, right? Those girls aren't going to be like, they might be watching their content, and looking at their pictures because they're like, oh, okay, like what is this girl doing? But they're not, they don't genuinely fuck with that girl. They're just like, no, nah, this girl makes me feel insecure. I'm going to I'm gonna have to, to see what I'm going to have to agree. I'm going to have to agree you know on that I mean? one because I've heard like, girls say They're not using it. their codes for like, for example, if a girl is sponsored by Raw Gear and they have like girl clothes. That girl is not using that other girl's code to buy raw gear if she makes her feel insecure. Yeah. And, and I just feel like, not to be misogynistic or whatever, but I feel like girls just get, they tend to get more insecure about that kind of stuff than guys do. 100%. Like, I can follow yeah. super handsome guys and, and be like, this guy's insecure. so handsome. Yeah. I want to look like this guy. Yeah, I'm literally. just like, yo. <laughs> For example, like, okay, in the least, like, weird way possible. For example, like Mike Thurston or like Joe Stetics. Yeah. yeah. I look at those guys and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, I would love to be these guys. Yeah. But I'm not jealous of the fact that right. that's them. I'm just like, oh, fuck. Like, do you think it's different though? Do you think do you think it's different though? Because you you have a platform of yourself? Because you maybe look at it as as, as you're just a normal. I mean, there's definitely some jealous guys. We see yeah, the hundred percent. But I think that the jealousy is different. Like, for example, like I used to watch you guys on YouTube and shit, right? And I was like, fuck, I wish I was in their situation. But like me wishing that like I was doing what you guys were doing wasn't, it wasn't like negative. Wasn't like a oh fuck like fuck these guys for doing right. what I want to do. Yeah. It was more like a motivating. Damn, like, this is, this is motivating. inspiring for it. me to see like oh shit like you started on TikTok like yo maybe I should start on TikTok and like my TikTok shit started through like thrifting clothes and like shoes and then that gave me the confidence to start with fitness mm -hmm. and I was just like oh shit like it picked up from there but like seeing what you guys have done and other people in the industry like for a long time you get motivated but it's like. It's not a negative motivation where it's like, yo, I want to be better than this person because fuck them. It's like a, yo, I want to like do what they're doing because they're doing really good things. Yeah. But that's also and more it's like a supportive. That's also thing. more like status than it is physical looks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because we're talking about physical looks and like our girls going to be more insecure about that. I mean, it's hard to say because there's definitely some guys where it's like, I'll see a comment and it'll just rip me or Sush apart. And it's like, okay. Yeah, Clearly, dude, there's something deeper. Jealous. Homie, did you see this comments on your fucking Instagram post when you posted the picture of me and you on the boat? They, someone reposted that shit and they were like, that's how you can tell what someone with who looks good natty and who looks good on steroids looks like. And it was like you like fucking Grabbing your boob. Yeah, like <laughs> just looking like a fucking behemoth of a human being. And then me like 
not lifting for a I, month and a half, like I, wearing I, socks no, on no the I will say, tan. bro, no I tan. will say those that was the sauciest photo like that that has ever been. I was, when you were in Miami, I was when you were in Miami, so that was mad. your I'm not gonna lie, I think that was your I think you were in better shape when you were in Miami than you were in Cancun or Tulum. Yeah, probably. Like you I've looked been, you looked fucking retarded. Bro, oh. do you know how mad I was when that picture went up? I was like, <laughs> yo, I look like Fucking shit. There's a reason I didn't reach out to you beforehand. And say, oh, yeah, 100%. I, post this? 100%, 100%. I was like, nah, I look good as fuck here. Not yeah. only was I and not. And the picks tan. were so hard. The picks were I know, so hard. They were sick. No, Except yeah. the socks on the boat. That was kind of weird, bro. Bro, sorry about that. I'm not letting people stare at my toes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you joking? You're I want to gonna... well, start getting like pedicures, literally. Yeah, but like, I don't. I'm not fucking Because then they're clean. Then they're going to be staring even feet. more. Yeah, but yeah. then they're clean. At least they're clean. Like, if I'm going to show my toes, I want them to be like Homie, presentable. I played soccer for like. 12 years oh you got all fucked up i'm toes. not fucking yeah. putting my like i've broken so many toes and shit i'm not fucking putting my feet on instagram yo is pedicure sus for guys no uh, i don't think it's no, sus it's if you're doing sus. it because it's a, you're it's in a little femme your feet yeah it's definitely femme, but, but it's not sus and i wouldn't i wouldn't do hands though because no nah, yeah i'm not doing hands yeah but, but it's kind of like if you're a man you got you want to have like man hands yeah and if you're getting them looking all pretty are they man hands yeah. or are they femme hands well yeah. okay so that's i think it comes different so like, people are gonna be seeing your feet for example like when i see like youtubers and shit do like weigh-ins and they're just crusted out toes and like okay that's gross i'm just like like kai green posted a tiktok and like his feet his toes were like it looked like his big toes were on the wrong foot i was like <laughs> yo <laughs> i was like how could you post that and everyone in the comments was cooking him yeah and like for that like if you're doing weigh-ins or some shit people are gonna see your feet yeah dude make your feet look nicer maybe someone will pay you like 30 dollars for a feet pick but like don't like i'm not putting my feet on social media like i will not i'll crop a photo out where my feet are really like, are you fucking kidding bro, bro i put my toes i, I don't even i don't so even think picks, twice yeah. yeah i don't think twice That's about gross. it gross i hate feet I, I hate feet like if a girl touched like uh, so oh my has god a problem with you right now <laughs> bro they gross me out like i'll be i'll be spooning my girl or some shit and she'll like reach her foot back and like you know like touch my leg with her toes and i'm like don't fucking do that really i hate feet they're like fucking hands but like on your legs it's gross i like foot rubs yeah you like to give them or receive them i don't like giving them because my thumbs get tired but i like receiving them yeah i'll receive a foot rub all day if i was getting a pedicure i'd be like yeah this is nice yeah but like i'm not gonna go out of my way like bro do you we suck toes <laughs> The way you smiled says yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like that's that scares me to like put a foot in my mouth. Well, dude, it's it's, it's got to be clean. It's like it's it's not necessarily like oh, I'm just randomly sucking toes. It's like like that's when that's when I'm like <laughs> well, yeah. No, I'm like, do you have to be emotionally invested for this girl to eat her, to suck her toes? Yeah. Cause like, you're yeah, not exactly. going to bring a girl home from the club and be like, oh shit, I got exactly. munch your no, dirty feet right now. No, it's, it's if, okay, well, <laughs> well, no, yeah, honestly, yes. Whoa. That's how it, but it's it ha I have to be extremely if it's just like some random girl you won't do I it. have to no I will I just have to be extremely horny and like really in the moment like really maybe fucked up or something like that <laughs> but like yeah, I don't know like if, if I <laughs> yeah I suck, the short answer is yeah I suck toes but okay so <laughs> my thing is like well if that's like your one thing that you enjoy doing do it. You know what I mean? But, like, for me, like... Well, we've talked about, like, different, like, a lot edgier stuff. Yeah, 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 for sure. But, like, for yeah. me, I would... Like, have you ever had a finger in your butt? Fuck no! Fuck no! <laughs> Fuck no! You put a finger in your ass? I mean, not, not, not my finger, <laughs> not my finger, but... What? I've had, yeah, and it feels like... Like, during head, it's, like, pretty nice. Like, you should... I was... I, I like, I'll let a girl, like... Like, for example, say my girlfriend's, like, sucking my balls or some shit. Oh, I hope her parents don't watch this shit. But... If she's sucking my balls or some shit, yeah, that feels good. But like, if she tried to slip a finger in my ass, like, absolutely fuck not. It's yeah, not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to go with Marco on this one. But yeah, it's I was not, gonna say it, it's not necessarily like slip. We've talked about this before, but it's not necessarily like slipping it in. But it's like more of like uh, caressing. You, yeah, and yeah. Okay, and then but, like ha maybe like a half inch in. <laughs> That's okay, like maybe down shit. to the second knuckle. Yeah. No. 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 no, no. <laughs> but um, fuck. Oh yeah, I saw a TikTok. It was literally like. When you're like, it was like a TikTok. You can imagine how it is. It's just like music and shit. But yeah, the yeah, text, yeah. the text, the speech to text was like, when your boyfriend is taking too long, like, and you're giving him head and he's taking too long. And then, like, the meme was like, she like pulls her finger out. Because, mm. like, supposedly it like, like increases the, I mean, I don't know. It just feels really nah, good when you be, come it's fast. It's like stimulate your prostate yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the I've heard, like, I've, I'm not, I'd be lying if I said I haven't heard that that yeah. really feels good. I just, like. I think there's a certain point in time when I'm you will. I'm not at a point in my life try. where I'm just, like, yeah. But yeah, you I'm will gonna, be. I'm going to let my girl stick my finger You're going to be ass. bored. 
as time know. goes on, you'll get bored and then you start experimenting. Because I think for me and you, it's it's less about like that won't feel good, and it's more just like degrading yeah <laughs> yeah nah i'm gonna be honest like I, it, i'm not like a toxic masculinity guy where it's like oh i'm so insecure with who i am like right i but, know my sexuality yeah but, really but there are limits but you know? like that like that like yeah obviously yeah i'm straight but, but like, i'm not judging I'm you not, yeah, yeah no if you don't I, have that by no means am i what is it called you? what is it called when um when you like uh, is it fetish shame or kink shame? Kink shame. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah. not yeah. kink, no one's shaming, kink you. shaming here. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, for me, I'm not at a point in my life where, like, obviously, like, yeah, I'm straight. I'm secure in my masculinity. Like, I don't right. care. But, like, I'm not at a point in my life where I'm going to be, like, yeah, for sure. Like, let me look. Yeah, I know who I am. I know what I like. But, like, let me try this. Like, I'm just not at the point in my life where I'm going to put a finger in my butt. Yeah, you will be, though. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's like, yeah, I'm going to change you, bro. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to change no. you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean... I don't know about you, but like when it comes to like the degrading thing, yeah, I feel like I'm definitely the guy in the relationship that's like, but but it's not necess- it's not more dominant. Like I don't well, like yeah. to be dominated yeah. at all. No, I like I like both. You know, submissive and breedable, bro. I'm both, <laughs> but it's like when you um, I'm not. It's definitely a kink of mine, but it's not like I'm necessarily getting degraded. But like I do think it's hot when. Ah, like, <laughs> I gotta your, choose your words wisely. Uh, yeah, but. like when um, not saying that I've done this because I actually haven't, but I do think it would. It's like kind of hot when like when the girl is like really, really dominant in the fact that like, you know, she kind of takes charge or like she's almost like that's different. That's yeah, I know, that's but different. Yeah, but I like when a girl takes charge and like make it like does the what's the word initiative makes the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes she's moves the and one who's initiating stuff i would say my girlfriend but that's the different one from like pouring yeah. hot wax on no me that's what like, i was saying is like there's like if do you think that okay right okay not not saying that i would do this <laughs> but i like the amount of disclaimers in this fucking no, conversation i'm not saying that i have done this because i haven't and i'm not saying i would do this but like think about the level of like like a girl like stepping on you like, do you know what I mean? Like, like it's, stepping on your back? No, yeah, like, no, no, just yeah, like, yeah, you like something like that where it's like super degrading. Yeah, where it's like I almost think that I think that's kind of hot. Okay, so this is what my question was, right? I wouldn't. Would you you're consider successful. that degrading? I mean, not degrading, but you're definitely going into the submissive. Yeah, position. yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not like definitely as time has gone on, I'm more cool with the girl like one taking charge and also just being like a little more dominant in bed but i it has it can't go above 60 40 i still have to yeah, be 60 yeah, you gotta dominant. be 60 yeah. yeah okay so right so you're successful right you say uh, you're i would successful. say i do well for my age yeah yeah okay I'm right successful. do you do you think that you liking a girl to be dominant is because you're like a dominant guy every day like day to day mm. and then like her to you're like oh shit like this is my like chance to like not be that guy you know what i mean because like obviously yeah. you got to walk around like I, yeah i'm big dick energy fucking you, you right. know what i mean so it's like i feel like she doing like a girl doing that to you is like your opportunity to be like yo like escape yeah escape yeah. reality yeah. like because yeah. this is my reality like, let me put a then, finger in my ass <laughs> <laughs> step on me pour hot wax yeah i i mean i guess that makes sense i never thought of it like that but it, i think it, that's what it is because i feel like that it's like a because obviously you're secure and like your masculinity like who you are your sexuality and all that shit so for this is like a, an escape for you because it's like oh I don't have to be like this dominant macho guy like I can like fucking have a finger in my butt and like yeah get and just be a little bit more me. submissive yeah, yeah. I, that makes sense honestly I feel like that's probably what it is I don't think that it's like but with I me think it's, it's weird. not like I wouldn't say that I'm dominant in bed because I because I feel like I have a point to prove no yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't it's say just that. what I prefer you yeah know? no I wasn't saying that either preferences. I was just saying it's preference but like for him for example like. It's just his preference, and like, cause you, all three of us are successful. Yeah. To it, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's just how you interpret it, B- different than how we interpret it. That makes sense. Mm. Well, okay. I don't even know how we started talking about that shit. I think I you asked know. me for one finger in my butt, and I screamed no. <laughs> well, I think that's what happened. Yeah, I guess. What yeah. else do we got? I got a I got a three thousand dollar mattress. Oh, oh yeah. Word. Yeah. You, I was really holding off on. Buying that because I'm like, why would I spend this kind of money on a fucking yeah, mattress? Yeah, a king, a king mattress. A king purple. Is it- if you guys know purple, the brand, it's like super high tech. And I read a bunch of reviews. I didn't just buy it. 
and basically all the reviews that were comparing purple to like another good mattress that was less expensive were saying like both of these mattresses are good but at the end of the day the purple mattress is going to be the closest thing to being weightless like just sleeping on a cloud yeah that's crazy do you like oh excuse me do you like uh uh, too do you like um what is it called like plush like soft mattresses or yeah. the thing is the thing about because i like medium but the thing about purple is like the way they have this kind of special gonna, purple mesh that goes is it on top like a like the little two like grids yeah, no, yeah, yeah no it's it's a square grid it's a square grid and it like i can moves show like you this, right yeah their commercials their commercials are like are like they pride themselves on this weird material. I looked yeah, at one. Yeah, and basically the way that it works, the way that it works is like it's firm up until a certain amount of pressure is applied and then it becomes soft. So on the points of your body, like your hips, where there's a ton of pressure being applied, it turns into like a soft mattress to kind of, so your hips aren't like raised up. But on parts where you don't need it to be super soft, it's more like firm for support. And it basically just like fully contours your body. Yeah. I just got a mattress too. Cause obviously like I didn't have any shit. So my apartment in Florida came furnished. Like it was like a high, like a school apartment. So I had to buy one too. And I went to like Ashley furniture homes or whatever. got like a Tempur-Pedic that I financed or whatever. And when I was at rooms to go, I looked at one of those and it was comfortable as fuck. Yeah. Did you, you get the bed frame that like bends? Cause that's what no, I know. Cause I already got, I, I actually ordered a bed frame before the bed. Cause I ordered a King bed frame to encourage me to not be lazy because I'm like, bro, if I have this bed frame sitting here unopened, I'm going to be like, all right, fuck it. I need to get a bed right now. So then that's what I did. I went and got a king bed. Yeah. But I didn't get this. I didn't get the like reclining. No. Yeah. I got one. Oh, I, you did? Yeah. Bro, yeah, yeah. see, I'm rocking a queen right now and I'm thinking about getting a, I have a, some shit Amazon headboard or like bed frame headboard that was like a hundred bucks. Can I hit that? Yeah. A hundred bucks. And then. Um, a queen mattress that I got from Ikea, but I'm low key thinking, should I get a king? Cause my room is definitely big enough for a king. Bro, your room is big enough for a fucking California <laughs> extended limousine so fucking king. This should I, I'm huge. thinking, should I get a king? I don't know if I should get a king or not. Cause now that you got a king, you kind of like shat on me with your mattress. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck, maybe I should get well, a king. I would have gotten a king. If I, I gotta had see space, it. So I gotta see your setup. It. I gotta see your setup and see what the actual difference is. Cause how much bigger is it? It's a good amount bigger. It's pretty wide. I mean, and it's longer. And it's longer. Yeah, yours has to be a fucking square. Your height, laying down one way. It's like it's like a foot longer, and a foot wider than a queen or something like that. It's pretty fucking big. It's a big. But also, if two people are sleeping in it, it's like you're both sleeping on like a. You're both sleeping on like a full. Like each side of the bed is like a full sized bed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can literally be in two different zip codes <laughs> in the same bed with someone. Yeah. So and sometimes Cal Cal jumps in the bed too, so that'd be good. Yeah. I'm and like kicking him and shit. I mean, you should probably dude, get a purple mattress with another me. girl. Get a purple mattress. Bro, or wait, three, wait, wait till I, I get would mine. rather wait till I get mine and then lay on. it. I would rather spend one. the money. I would rather because the mattress for me, I can sleep on anything, bro. So like, cause, wait until I because you mattress. and Eric. You and Eric are like, oh, mattress this, mattress that. I could literally sleep on the floor. That's like, how I was too. Yeah. And then I walked into the store and they were like, if you look at it, like, okay, so I pay, I think it's like 40 bucks a month or like 30 something dollars a month for like 60 months. If you break it up that way. You leased your mattress. <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah, you can. You Fuck can do yeah. That. It builds credit. Oh shit. It builds credit. Does it actually? Yeah. Because yeah. you pay it off every month. I was going to do that, but then I saw I had to go through like a firm. I had to go through like a company to yeah. lease it. And yeah, I'm that's like, what they this. did. I'm just they did for full. me too. I, don't, I can't, dude, I can't. Get another thing on my credit, bro. My credit's gonna go down because yeah. they they take away your credit goes down when you have more shit yeah. spread out. And then well, it then get another credit card. Up. Yeah, because no, 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 because it all goes into the same credit. Yeah, report. same social. It's your same well, social. Well, what I'm saying is, get a separate credit card so that you have so you have a set spending limit, right? So you can only spend like no, say, but your credit score is tied to your like social security. Yeah, number. I'm not talking like, about yeah, my, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about my credit card score. I'm oh, talking about I thought my, you were like, saying like I, I thought you meant actual, that you had too many things on your credit. No, card. No, 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 no. Your credit score goes down card. the more inquiries from companies you get. So like, if you open a new credit card, it's going to go down temporarily. Yeah, yeah, but then it goes back up. It goes back up. You have more it, opportunities it goes to build back credit. Up, but like I, le- I fucking financed my mattress. I was like, I would I'm rather dropping three racks on a fucking. But I was going to say, I was going to say, I would rather pay. I would rather pay the money. To get like a really nice headboard and a really nice bed frame and a really nice like, like RH yeah. modern type of like. But bro, I mean, I sp- I I spent five hundred bucks on a bed frame just because I wanted to. I have a certain aesthetic I'm going for, like the rustic wood, and I mean, you can get a nice bed frame. <laughs> 
listen to me, bro. I'm I'm, thir- I'm 35 years old. I was gonna say you're I'm, an old. Fucking I'm getting man, excited bro. about furniture. I'm doing interior design. I'm like, all right, this is where this is gonna go, and this has to match the colors. But sleep, like I'm getting my bed probably in a couple weeks. Just lay on it, and you'll probably buy one. Because think about how much like better your your life is gonna be. When you wake up every day and you're just like your your skeleton, do they make firm or do they only make one style? That's the thing you don't you don't need firm with this kind of mattress because it just like it just adjusts. And it it even said every single like review that I read said that purple is going to be better if you're a heavier sleeper, like if you weigh more, and if you're a side sleeper because the way I do sleep on my side because the way that it like. Again, this is turning into a, this is turning into a mattress I know. podcast. All right, we'll move no, on. No wait, I want to know because I want to fucking hear. <laughs> so you guys can listen to or skip ahead. The like I said, this like technology that they have is different from memory foam, and it like the amount of softness that it has changes based on the weight, of the body. amount of pressure that you're applying to a certain area. Okay. So you can push on it a little bit, and it'll be firm. But then if you apply more pressure, it becomes soft. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like those parts of your body that usually might be out of whack, like your hips might be tilted up because the bed's too firm. That amount of pressure is actually going to make it soft and your hips will be in line with the rest of your body. And think about, I really, I'm a big believer and I don't even follow this, but I am a big believer in like sleep is probably the number one most important thing. And the quality of sleep, like is going to make your workouts better. It's going to make you feel better. If you wake up and you just slept on a fucking cloud, like your whole skeleton on a bro science level, like everything is just aligned, you know? Yeah, yeah that does sound good. Cause I've been sleeping on my couch. Like I saw, I got a pullout couch. Uh, the day I moved in, I went and picked one up and I don't get my mattress for like another like week and a half, two weeks. And it was supposed to be here two days ago, but like it got pushed back again. And now I'm telling you, bro, my body fucking hurts. Yeah. So and especially, for the past, especially like, as you weeks. get bigger and you're more muscular, like sometimes I'll sleep on yeah, this I'm mattress that I have which is, it's a thin mattress, the one I currently have, and it's kind of firm medium. And I'll wake up and like my, my delt will be numb. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. arm will be numb because I'm sleeping like this my with my hand under the, under the pillow. And I don't notice it when I'm sleeping, but then I wake up and I have to hang my bed at my arm off the side of the bed so that the blood flows yeah, back yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, it hurts, right? And I'm thinking, bro, my <laughs> blood circulation was just cut off for like eight hours. No, yeah, that's I mean, that I can't be too. good for muscle growth, you know? Yeah, that shit hurts. Damn. Yeah, I was just get sold me. I know, dude. Purple we need purple sponsor, sponsor, this sponsor jam. Yo, whoa, whoa. whoa. Code jam. I need part of that shit as well. <laughs> Let me get. We a don't even have one. Wait, how long does it take to? Mattress. Do they have to make it? No. So they. How long? How long till you get your mattress? And would you order it? Well, there were two options. There was one where someone, I want it now. <laughs> someone would come and they would build it for me in my room. I wouldn't have to do anything, and they'd move my old mattress out. But they said that if I chose that one, a specialist from Purple would reach out to me in five plus weeks. And that was just to organize delivery, which then could take another three weeks. So it's like, okay, I just, I'll set it up myself and hopefully get it in like two weeks. So what, you got to build it yourself? You got to sew this shit together? No, (laughs) No, like, what is there, what is there, like, like unrolling it and setting up the bed frame, putting it on the bed frame, moving the old bed out. That's all shit that I'm going to have to do now. Yeah. Which is annoying, but yeah, you got got crippled Sush to help you. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, And crippled Marco. Yeah, yeah dude, you're I coming over to hand. you're coming over to fucking build this shit. I, got one I had hand. drip help me yesterday because I didn't want to bother you. I thought you were sleeping. Move the um the dresser that I got. Yeah, no, shit. I'm was pretty heavy. sure it weighed 200 pounds. Yeah, I heard I heard the stairs. Like, like I heard freaking. Yeah, I heard you guys walking up the stairs, and I was like, "There's no way they're not moving something because that yeah. shit was loud." And I didn't want to hurt my drip because he was the one. I was I'm going below. up first. Yeah, yeah. And he was going below. Stronger guy got to go on the so bottom. I was. Well, no, I, he wanted me to go up first. So I grabbed kind of like the middle of it so that I could support like 75% of the weight. Yeah. And I was fucking dying, dude. Yeah. Holy no shit. cardio. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have a dresser yet. So <laughs> I don't have anything. How was your apartment looking? Uh, it's like, is it a studio or no. is it? So you have your own bedroom. Yeah. I have my own bedroom. The bathroom is huge. Compared Wait, what's to a studio? Like, like what studio is like open for? Plan. Yeah. It's open. Like there's literally nothing. So it's like oh, kitchen, shit. dining room, room, living room. And then you can put your bed, bed wherever yeah. you want. Yeah. Low key. Fuck. I low key would have liked that. Yeah. Studios it, are set. I don't know how like many there are very, in Houston, but yeah. it's Wouldn't more of like a like open. Yeah. It's more of like a New York. Yeah. Like LA New York is thing. like everywhere. Yeah. Right. No, it's, it's nice though. I'm getting a, uh, I'm getting a fucking king. I don't know if I'm getting get that a mattress. King, get a purple. No, wait. Because till I, I want to put more money into this, a, a badass fucking 
bed frame and headboard and get both, bro. I mean, a bed frame, well, even well, if you get like probably eight k. No, 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 no. I'm thinking RH get... Modern, bro. I'm thinking where we got this table from. I'm thinking RH Modern bed frame. Yo, okay, but think about it, man. Think about it. Mattresses, aesthetics. <laughs> Y'all are debating like old man versus like. 20 year old college student. Yeah, who's we're the same age. <laughs> yeah, but you're you were old. just telling me, you were just telling me off podcast, I gotta start spending money. You know, I gotta start writing the shit off. Yeah, I have to write shit off. Oh, my bed true. is in my video every time. Yeah. And but yeah, I, I wrote my bed off. I gotta have good sleep for my workouts, so that's yeah, a tax write off. Yeah. But, um, like, bro, you can get a nice ass bed frame for one to two thousand, but think about it, bro. What are you sleeping in? You're not sleeping in the bed frame. You're sleeping yeah, on the bed. What's it, actually no, going to improve true. your quality of life? That's true, but bed frame does look sick. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they got to so offer. So what's after bed? What's after we got? We got some pod <laughs> topics now from a little story that I posted. And someone said, when being with a girl, what do you prefer? Giving pleasure or receiving pleasure? The uh, floor is yours. <laughs> uh, well, Seuss likes to suck toes. But, so it's giving. Yeah, that's giving, but I'm also g- receiving pleasure as well. What would yeah. you rather? Like, do you care if she finishes? Because I 100% do. No, sometimes. I'm just like, I have a complex with that shit. For me, like, I, ca- I can't finish until she finishes. Unless we're finishing, like, at the same time, which, like, yeah, it happens, but, like, it's not every time. Yeah, stars but, align. Like, yeah, unless <laughs> fucking astrology shit happens. I'm not, like, I personally, like, I can't finish unless she finishes. Yeah, because I'm just I like agree. my job. Wait, we had this same done. conversation on the after dark when we were drunk. I remember. Oh yeah, I think we did. Me yeah, and Mark we went. Had oh, something yeah, we had yeah, we were drunk. All right, y'all. let's keep it more low key this time. Um, <laughs> nah, yeah, hundred percent. I can't finish until she finishes because yeah. I'm just like, yo, my job. Like, okay, not that sex is a job, but like, <laughs> my, my occupation part, is making you come, bro. I'm yeah. not even gonna lie. It's like if I come and and you don't. It's like, sorry, bro. <laughs> and I tap out. But like, but are I you like, putting, are you like making like an effort? To no, yeah, I am. I yeah. am. I am. Oh, okay. And well, also before, okay, and also before, go. usually I, I'll like eat her out and stuff. Oh, okay. As long and then as if she does, if she has like a, um, uh, what, what is it? Fucking clit orgasm that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Then, then that happens. And yeah. I'm like, okay, so then I can kind of just do my thing. He's like lit, yo, the next 45 yeah. seconds going to be fucking exactly. fast. <laughs> exactly. That's how it is. Yeah, I think I had talked to James. I talked to James about this in Miami. So like when me and my girl like have sex and shit, she finishes like fast, like she'll finish fast, but then it takes her a while for her like clit to not be sensitive Yeah, to the point that like I can't touch it for like 10, 15 minutes. And then like 10, 15 minutes later, I'm just like, oh, like, all right. She's, She's like, she's like, no, like it feels like. She's like, her legs will shake and shit, like, if I don't stop touching it for, like, I'd say 10 minutes. minutes, bro. Damn. Maybe 10. But, like, bro, if I'm having sex, like, I'm having sex for, Yes, yeah, like, so I think there's, a like, while. a hyper, hyper sensitive. Some yeah. girls are, like, hypersensitive in that area. Yeah, yeah, like, she'll finish, like, fast. Like, I'm talking, like, five minutes, maybe. Yeah. Like, I, sometimes she'll be, like, stop. Like, I'm going to finish. Like, she's like, I actually want to have sex. It's not just, like, get me to finish. Like, it becomes a race for me. I'm like, sometimes, yeah, well, how, some, how fast can I get her to finish? Sometimes, <laughs> uh, well, this is going to lead into code jam at amino asylum but sometimes i'll i'll finish too fast so like i like and like and when i know that i want to have like a really good time i'll take like the poxetine poxetine. before does that make you not come yeah it literally what what was like the original use for it like what did they make it for because there's no way they made that for that i think that's that is what they made it for it's an ssri but not like a depression med like it just it blocks serotonin but i think I, okay, I'm no fucking expert, but I think that <laughs> orgasms have something to do with like the serotonin system getting fucking stimulated, and it sex still feels just as good on dipoxetine, but in terms of like actually going from feeling good to climaxing, it prevents that like build up. Oh, so you can't finish on you it. Can, no, you can, but it depends on the dose. You got it. Yeah, you got to you master 60, your dose. You got to master your dose. If, for me, if I take sixty. No shot. An yeah. hour of fucking marathon sprinting and no shot. Oh, there were, dude, there was like the, one of the first hookups that I did back at the old house. I took the, your depoxetine. And at, did at, I tell you to take 60 or something? At the time, it was, I think it was the, it was your, the pills. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't amino. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how much it was, but I took that. And then did I was also. you take also, a whole one? I don't know what I took. I don't remember, but I was also drunk. Like I was like slamming the white claws, remember? Yeah, I was like yeah, trying yeah. to get the nerves out. Yeah. And oh, first hookup? It was yeah, it was like first hookup in, in yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah. So and I was like a little buzz. Well, I was pretty drunk. And then I also had taken this epoxy and it was like like forty five to an hour and I had to just stop because I couldn't 
Yeah. So yeah. like you can you can fuck it up pretty bad, but you have to master your dose. It's weird because I I used to have the problem with no dipoxetine of lasting too long, to the point where it's like, okay, like after thirty minutes we're both kind of just getting sore, and then it's just yeah. like, all right, I gotta finish. Come on. That's but how I feel. Recently, too. it's been like after like ten minutes or so, I gotta start pacing myself, which is weird that it kind of just randomly happened. Like ten or fifteen minutes, I noticed that. All right, I got to slow down. Like fuck. So probably I've been, the, it, it's probably the because you started like a little bit more gear. So I feel like it also depends that. on like how into it you are that day. Like sometimes I, I just don't want to have sex, but like she does, and I'm like, all right, like yeah, we can have sex. You yeah. know what I mean? And then it's like okay, but like other times I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to have sex right now, and it's way faster. There's definitely yeah. a level of horniness that has to do with it, but I feel yeah. like for me. Once, even if I'm not horny, but if I'm in the act, like there's, it's, it would be the same level of like, if I was horny and then if I wasn't horny, but if I'm actually doing it, it equals the same for me. Oh no. Like, I, if I'm really horny, I definitely finish quicker. Cause I'm just like, oh I'd, shit. Like, yeah, I'm actually like. It's weird though. Right Cause sometimes when, I don't know why this is, but sometimes when I'm super into it and. Wait, wait. What? Oh, it was a Coinbase notification, so I wanted to see what it, if it was anything important, but it's not. Oh, did Bitcoin did go Bitcoin up? Bitcoin dropped a little bit. Oh, oh fuck. fuck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Just I like, can buy um, more. Yeah, sometimes when I'm super into it, I almost last longer, and I don't really know why. And then when I'm not as into it, I last for like less time, and I have to pace myself. Maybe because Dude, you're trying I'm to get over it, or trying to get yeah. it done with. You're, you're like, but I'm not trying to get it done with. It's just like, I'm into it regardless, but sometimes it's like aggressive fucking gorilla horny. <laughs> and then I last like trend horny versus yeah. just yeah. regular man yeah. horny. But as for the actual question, I mean, yeah, holy shit, we totally. I like, know we went off on a tangent. I mean, for me, I'd say n- like, like, how do I phrase this? Okay, like having intimate sex with someone, we would all agree is way better than just like a mindless hookup. Yeah, and the reason for that is emotion plays such a big role in sex and just overall your mental state plays such a big role in it so for me i i can't yeah i'm the same way as you i can't finish unless she does and i have a thing where i just like want to like pr and just like keep making her dude's like bro <laughs> because for this me guy's it's lifting such, everywhere i was gonna say PR it's, such a, guy's like, it's such a um like sex is so like mentally and emotionally tied it's not just physical stimulation because then you're just using someone else's body to jack off basically if it's just yeah that's my that's my thing which is like thought process so yeah for me 90 percent of the pleasure comes from her pleasure because it just makes the sex so much better that's because you care about her like if you don't care about that person i doubt that it matters well even for me and this is why i was i first said it's like a complex for me is like even when i was hooking up it was kind of the same thing, not to the same degree. Yeah, so I'm saying it, it doesn't matter still, as much. R- it doesn't matter as much, but yeah, but it still matters kind of just like an ego thing. Well, yeah, but okay, right? So if you're in a relationship with a girl, you're like, yo, like it's my like responsibility the same way that it's hers to make sure that she feels fulfilled and that I feel fulfilled. Yeah. So for you, it's and me as well, it's like a, yo, I can't feel fulfilled unless she's fulfilled because after yeah. I nut, I'm not fucking again. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm not going to fucking have sex. I'm not going to fucking... No, the, and then the, the be able Reuters, to put it right back the in. The Reuters look at each other like, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, if I if I finish like two minutes later, I'm not I'm not putting my dick back in. Right. You like, can't. Yeah. I'm not hard after I finish. Are you kidding me? That shit's soft. Well, yeah, not the shit deflates. Yeah, do you no, think no, it? No, do you think it? Do you think it's from the roids? A hundred. Well, no. I Your mean, shit what, stays hard after you nut. No. Yeah, I no, but like I could. Well, honestly, usually for me, if I'm especially if wait, like immediately right when you nut, it just goes soft. No, not okay. It's okay. not like a fucking like a balloon that you thing. just let go. But like, I'm talking. Nah, nah. But if like, I you nut, can't. Okay, so let's say in ten minutes, can you go again? Yeah, for me, I yeah, can. for me, it's ah. like 100. percent It's not that I can't. I just would not want to. It's definitely the gear then. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you guys have better blood flow and shit as well. Like you know what the you know what the refractory period is. Have you heard of that? It's like the amount of time that a guy needs. That's when it's like, go make me a sandwich and I'll have sex with you again. Between, um, <laughs> no, it is. It, that's what like, yeah, that's where it I comes mean, from. it's the, and, and in young, oh, really? that, in that. younger guys, the refractory time, the amount of time you need in between having an orgasm and being able to get hard again is like anywhere from like five to 15 minutes. 
But in older guys, it's like 24 hours because they have lower test. So hormones play a huge role in that, that like refractory period. So obviously if we're like on trend, yeah. it's going to be like five, 10 minutes. Yeah. For me, like if I have sex, Plus Cialis. I would probably want to yeah. wait. Like if, if I have sex, right. So that's what, that's what I was saying. If I finish, like there's no way that I'm fucking her again, like within the next, like in the amount of time for her to finish. So if I finish, like I'm done, you know what I mean? Like I'm, yeah. I'm not going to want to move. For at least like a few anymore. hours. Yeah. For probably like 45 like you, minutes to an hour. Like if, if we're going to have sex again, it's got to wait an hour or like we'll have sex like mid morning kind of thing. Like, and then again at night, it's not, I don't want to have sex again. Like within like the next 15, 20 minutes. I have a question. When you're with your girl, how many average times per week would you say you have sex? Um, and you, this goes for you too. All right. So let's say I go visit her, right? And I'm there for a week, probably like five times. Is it three, three or four? Like, like she wants to have sex every day, multiple times a day. I'm not like that. Cause like, number one is like, bro, I've been struggling with like trying to lose weight for months now. Like losing weight, starving myself, binge right. eating, losing weight, starving myself, binge eating, like very insecure. I take my okay. shirt off, all that. So shit. that's so kind of like, for me. Then. Like, I don't want to have sex if like. I ate too much. Like I'm just like not not taking my shirt off. I feel fat or like damn. Like it's dude. Bad. Even when I was bulked up, bro, at my worst, like when I was fat as fuck, like I would never fuck with a shirt on or like I would always just take like I'd take it yeah, off. Yeah. Well, like that wouldn't stop me. It's not that I'm not. Fu- oh, yeah, I'll take my shirt off to have sex and shit. But it's like it takes more for me to want to have sex. Yeah, it's like right. So I, well, like, you're not as comfortable with your body. So yeah, it makes dude. sense. It makes sense. And it's also like right. So if she looks really good. Why would I want to not look really good? Yeah, you know I mean, like I don't want to be next to you. But that's also like that's hell like, body dysmorphia. Head. Yeah, that's in your head. You look bro. great, bro. Even that's when you're bulked. And I know like, you still look way better than the average guy. Yeah, and your girl is probably not even thinking second. Yeah, I know, it. but it's it's in my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. You know what head. I mean? Like, like I don't. So, for example, back to like the thing, right? If I if she finishes, right? If I if I finish, I'm not having sex again. Like I'm done for the night. Like I want to be chilling. But like I'll have sex multiple times in a day. It's got to be spaced out. For you guys, it's mm-hmm. different. So like if she doesn't finish and you finish. You could always just like eat her out for five minutes or some shit and then have sex with her again. Yeah. I don't have that option because I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that. Like, I want to go to sleep. Like, I like to have sex late at night and then roll up, like, get up, take a piss, like, fucking lay across the toilet bowl, like, push my boner <laughs> down and pee and then go to bed. Like, I like going, I like going this, the multiple rounds because I don't come as fast. Dude, the second round is like, yeah, marathon. Yeah, dude. And that's what I like about it is because I can, it's like, just like, dude, yeah, the, shit. the second round is like your, your infinite confidence. Because you're like, I can literally go as hard as I want and like, I'm not going to finish, mm-hmm. you know? But the first round, you kind of got to pace yourself if a I'm little doing, bit. If I'm doing two rounds, like consecutively, I'm definitely not as hard the second time. Not the whole time, yeah. But I mean, Cialis and gear helps. Well, yeah, but you guys are fucking using like, if there was a cheat code, you guys are using like the king of all cheat codes. <laughs> Bro, fucking I- Cialis and on gear. And <laughs> not just like a small amounts of gear. Like you guys are like on task trend, like whatever, like. Y'all are horny. You're horny bastards. Like, yeah. bro, if I have sex, I'm I was chilling. thinking, like, I good. thought, because I, I thought like average amount of times per week, if you're like with someone and spending 24 seven with them is probably like seven, like every day. And then, but then it just Hannah was routine. like, cause for me, I'd say average would be like eight to 10 times per week. And I thought. Fuck, dude. Maybe that's a little high, but not that high. But then I looked up the average, and it's like one to three times. And I'm like, okay, well, what about for young people? And nah, I yeah, for me, I'd say like if we're together, probably like five, five times that week. Yeah, because like then I looked days, it up, five. and it was like three, I think like three times per week for like people in their twenties. I'm like, no way, that's real. So I reached out to the horniest guy I know, Lex, <laughs> and I'm like, Lex, when you're with Aaron, how many times are you guys having sex per week? He's like, I don't know, maybe about three. And I'm like, oh my god, I have an issue. Yeah. <laughs> I have a fucking problem. It's because you're always trying to PR, bro. So it's like you're trying yeah, to get like, no like, rest days. You're just trying to He's hit like, the... yo, bro, last time I had Progressive sex, I left overload, it yeah. like, let's hour. go. He's like, last time was an hour. If this time's not at least an hour and thirteen minutes, like I fucking failed, bro. Like, I'm a fucking disgrace, my father. Like Dude, I uh I've never talked about this in the podcast. Um 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 I'm not gonna say I'm not really gonna get into details, but there was one night um that I I had sex with this girl for like I w- I'm not I'm not over exaggerating. It was like 14 or 15 times in 2 days. Holy shit. <laughs> what and, the fuck? And and it was like the first the first night. Yeah. So not even a day. It was honestly probably like 20 
24 hours. So the first night it was like, like bro, nine times. And like, I wasn't, I wasn't finishing. Like there was a point where I just, I wasn't finishing. Yeah. And then the next day you it was like, same thing, it? bro. Yeah. Same thing. You were just like, just because I was so horny, dude. But were you getting like a release at all? Like I w- it was just fun. Like, I don't even know you how to explain it. You were just having a good time. Yeah. I swear to, like it was literally just for, cause at that point I wasn't finishing but i was still doing it just because i was like i was just having a good so time. so what would literally. you stop like why would you stop like when we were just tired yeah and it was like okay i'm gonna go shower like that's literally how it was damn that kind of sounds lit that's like a fucking sex marathon yeah it was it was fucking nuts and like if i could get that many boners in a day i feel like that'd be lit yeah it was we- it was weird dude and that was like i probably was on cialis but like that's it like i mean i was on gear too but <laughs> <laughs> I, okay right so this is like where it comes to like the pleasure thing again like my girl, like, she hates doing doggy. Like, she's like, it hurts my stomach. Like, my stomach hurts. Like, she's like, whatever. She gets, like, upset. I like it. You know what I mean? So then it's like, am I going to give that up just because she doesn't like it? Please. The same you got to, like, compensate. Like, But that's what I'm saying. So, like, when you have sex that many times, like, if you're having sex 10 times. A week. A not week. A that's what not I'm not saying. Like, if you're having sex 10 times for that week, you yeah. could be like, all right, like, bet, like. If I want to do this, we do it this day. And then if she wants to do whatever, she does that day. Just for the, someone who asks, like, pleasure versus, like, giving yeah. pleasure versus receiving. Like, you split it. You know what I mean? Like, if you really like something, for example, like, Sush likes feet. If she's not into that, <laughs> she drop, lets him the, do drop it. Drop the feet thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I mean, like, no, I wouldn't. You know what I mean? Like, it's a one. Like, okay, yeah, Sush gets that twice a week. Mm-hmm. Like, opposed to, like. Yeah. I haven't had that experience where it's, like, nothing that the girl doesn't Doesn't, like. yeah. So it's like I there's never any kind of compromise, you know. I guess. I mean, you're having sex a lot. That's kind of wild. I'm still like caught up on the fact that you said ten times in a week on average. I wouldn't say I finish every one. Now it's times. zero. Yeah, rip. Lonely, but I wouldn't say. I wouldn't boy. say. You know what's funny is I've been doing no fab. Oh, yeah, like facts. Now. I, I do no fab. I don't. Fat, I don't jag off. It's been brutal. Really. I'm on trend. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. The way you looked bro. at me and said I'm on trend like, explains You're a it fucking all. idiot. I'm on trend. Bro. I'm on fucking trend, dude. My <laughs> dick's hard looking at this water bottle, bro. It's <laughs> empty and the cap needs to be filled. You know what I mean? Like, nah, but like, nah. I'll do no fab. Is not a problem. Like, I'll go like. I don't like no fab. I'll go I don't like. like it I don't either. feel good. I don't feel. I just don't. Yeah, feel good. yeah, same. But I just. I don't know why. For I'm me, just, it's like, just like, like I'm just like, like whatever. Like I'm not just gonna. It's definitely a thing for like. Like, it's not because you, it feels good, but because it's like a mental thing. Like, I want to know that I can do it, you know? Yeah. Like, how long are you going to go? What, it is, what yeah. are you do? Like 30 days or something? Until I just can't. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know. For me, it's more of like that I'm not reliant on like watching people have sex. Like, validated by like another dude having sex with a different girl on like screen. Yeah, like, but I'm not. Yeah, but I don't think it's like that. After I, like if I've watched, like when I watch porn or whatever, I feel gross after. Like I feel disgusting. Really? Like, yeah, I feel disgusting. Post like, not clarity. Yeah, yeah bro. Hard. I'm just like, yo, I'm fucking sitting on the toilet with my dick in my hand. What the fuck am I doing? You jerk off in the toilet? Yeah. Where do you fucking, you jack off in, in your bed? bed? Yeah, bed, bro. tissue, bro. Nah, bro. I'll, sit, I'll sit on the toilet and I'm just like, I like, I mean, I, the shower. I, I mean, I'm not trying to get I'm fucking not come I, on my bed. I'm not saying I wouldn't, like I never jerked off in my toilet, but I just, not, I'm not saying it's, it's not my ritual. go-to it's place. It's not that I've never done it on my bed. It's not my go-to place. <laughs> but like, nah, like I'll just like, get I'm horny. Toilet. Time to go over to the shitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't think I've watched porn in probably like four months. Holy shit. Yeah. I don't oh, honestly, I good for you. Yeah. No, I wasn't saying no fap, like no porn. I meant like no, no fap. Beating or not having sex at all. Like that. Not includes? jacking off. Not, oh, okay. Yeah. At all. Damn. And it's been like a week. That was since the last time you saw Hannah, right? No, it was a little longer than that. Okay. Since the last time I saw Hannah. But I don't know. I would just like, I didn't do it for a couple of days because I was busy and tired. And then I'm like, ah, it's been a while since I've given this a shot. So I just, just didn't. Damn. It's, dude, like the fourth or fifth day, it was so brutal that. Really? I was actually, and th- this is why I don't really get the whole no fap thing. I mean, for some guys, it really does work. Obviously, it's individual dependent. And maybe it's because I'm on gear, but I become so unproductive at like day four, day five, because you're just thinking about sex. All I'm thinking about is sex, and yeah. I can't like it's I'm and it, I just can't do anything. That's why guys do it. I think um, D Tran has talked about this. When you does he do it? Yeah, he does no fat because his main thing. I saw a TikTok, and I don't know if this is correct, but or if if he said this like this, but he he pretty much said it like if I don't jerk, if I don't get off to myself, then I have to go out. And actively right. get girls, and I think that's why a lot of guys do do it is because it, it's like that extra push 
for them to go talk True. to that, talk to that girl or go get that girl. So makes sense. If that, but yeah, then and that the doesn't guys, make sense. There's, I don't know if you guys have heard of Solbra on Instagram, but he's all into like the holistic, like esoteric stuff, and he does semen retention, where even if he has sex with a girl, he'll make her finish, and then that's it. He doesn't come. That's that's that hard. Is, that's that hard. Is some monk because I feel like shit. if I have like if I haven't finished like either with another girl or by myself for who like a two weeks yeah and i go and have sex with a girl like bro that's gonna be hard for me dude i was about to say he's gonna have like the fattest as soon as i slip it in bro it it would it would yeah yeah i actually (laughs) yeah no if i I know i I know someone i know someone that did no fap and he started talking to this girl and it had been about two months since he'd had any sort of orgasm and he said that he went he finally decided this is the girl he was going to do it with. He went in, out, in, and pulled out. Yeah, that was I was going to say, was that's four, probably going to be what it was. It was like losing strokes. virginity all over again. Yeah, and that was it. That's and then wild. Was she like upset? She was like, what the fuck? And then he said he had to explain to her, like, <laughs> I've been doing this fucking experiment. That's, that's going to be my excuse next time. Like so she's like, yeah, bro, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't busted a nut yeah, in six months. Yeah, I've been months. doing this, like, crazy experiment. <laughs> no, but what I what you I have You were worthy done, of finishing the experiment. <laughs> what I have done is if I, like, if if someone's going to come over, I would, like, um like jerk off before so that way I last longer. So that's, like, natty deboxetine. The way that, <laughs> the reason I wouldn't do that, even though that does work. But then my erections aren't as strong. I don't want my boners to not be as strong. Yeah. So I yeah, just and take I feel like I'm not as into take. it. I guess it could be, like, not as strong, but also, like... If I watch porn, I'm not like as into like having sex. Yeah, but it, it's that's like that, a, it, that's true. But like when a girl is literally in your grasp like that, it's like that just goes out of my yeah. out of my out of my like. I'm, I'm, gonna be can, I'm not thinking about the porn that I watch. Yeah, you know? oh, I'm, yeah like, but I'm, I'm just saying totally it's like turned on. It's more of like a. Yeah, I feel like it's what D Trend says. It's like if you don't watch porn, like you act, I have to actively like make an effort to have sex. Yeah. You can't just like pick up your phone and like be like, oh shit, like this six inch screen looks. And good. it is validating that you don't have to get off to yourself. But yeah, enough of the sex talk. Yeah, that was a long like. Someone said, "Why don't you and Sush work out together?" I feel like we've touched on this before, but it's like when we, we do, we it's for videos. <laughs> yeah, and, and also just like you, I'm not gonna lie, you're training way more intense than I am right now. Yeah, well, you got a broken leg, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's just like. When we moved in together, it was like, all right, it's Sush and James. We got to fucking train together every single workout. And we, we also had do, one car. Yeah, we have one car and we got to do the same workout. So if, if you know, I want to do one exercise and he wants to do another, we have to compromise and pick one. And now at this point, it's like, bro, we live together. And people see this as like fucking the, seeing their parents getting divorced. <laughs> yeah, like, see, people Whoa, think that you guys what? are married. It's like, it's like when parents stay together, but they sleep in separate bedrooms. Yeah, but and but that's the thing is like, not saying that we sleep together. But <laughs> just saying, at a certain point, like, you know, if a married couple, if they've been married for thirty years, and one of them is like snoring really bad, it's not going to be the end of the world if the other person leaves and goes and sleeps in another bed because they still love each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's like if I don't train with Sush, it's not like we're not fucking friends anymore. It's just like okay. He wants to bench and I want to hit back. There's no point in compromising it one used of our to be, workouts. It used to be like, okay, you need to take a rest day here and yeah, so that yeah, way yeah. we can get on the same split. Right. But now it's like, okay, if we happen to be hitting the same thing on the same day, we'll, bro, we'll hit it. We'll hit it together. <laughs> or like maybe we're both hitting chest, but then we just bench together. But then you want to go do some like machines and I want to go do dumbbells or whatever. We're not going to be like, no, you got to do machines with me. Yeah. It's just like, okay, fun benching. And now we go and do our separate things. Like, I'd, I don't know. I don't want to touch on this too long because I feel like we've talked about it. But yeah. we live together, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I see this guy all the time. I mean, Sush and I had talked about it earlier, like falling out of love with the gym. Yeah, we yeah he was actually he was actually saying that he's been yeah having a little like lack of motivation in the gym. So like, just you know how we went gear. to Miami? <laughs> you know how we went to Miami? Yeah. And like we lifted that day? That yeah. was the last time I worked out until I filmed another YouTube video. Holy shit. And, like, that was it. Like, I had worked out, like, with you, and then I didn't lift at all. In the last two months, how many times have you worked out? Four. So, two times a month. It's, like, because what, yeah. what happened was, so, I was in Florida, and when I had first come, I was shredded. Like, I felt good. And then I hurt my back. And, like, 
I couldn't work out as much. Like they were in pain. Like I was just working out for content, like for TikTok and like to like help other people get motivated and like give them workouts and shit. And it wasn't so much about like me lifting. And then like, instead of like taking time off and letting my back get better, I just like kept pushing through it, but like shitty workouts. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I'm not getting stronger. I'm getting smaller. I feel weaker. I'm gaining weight. Like then it was like a bunch of people, like I told you about like hate comments and shit. Like when, like I usually don't let them get to me, but like certain ones like hit hard and I'm like, yo, like fuck you. I'm yeah. like, fuck you dude. Mm-hmm. And it ruins my whole day. And I'm like, yo, I don't want to go to the gym. Like I'm upset. Or I'm like, yo, I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, yo, I'm fat. Like I cannot go to the gym right now. Like I look like shit. Like I can't take my shirt off. Like, and then I was like, all right, I need to change your scenery. And then I went to. We had lifted in Miami. That was the one day I lifted after like starving myself with like shitty fucking workouts and killing myself with cardio to like try to lose weight for Miami. I like got in my head, felt like shit, binge ate all of Miami. After that, like I went to Rolling Loud, still felt like shit, lifted one time after that for a YouTube video, didn't, didn't touch a weight. And then I broke my hand like right as I got here, it broke my wrist, like literally as I pulled up, like two days after I got hey, to Texas. Hey, maybe the silver lining on this is that once the wrist heals and the back's feeling all better, the motivation will come back because it's been so long. Because what I wanted was, bro, I needed to change the scenery. Bro, like maybe... A, I hated being dude, in Florida. Maybe you should try what I've been doing if you're having problems with, like, binge eating and stuff. What I've been doing is literally I eat whatever I want. I'm still conscious about, like, I still count everything, but so there are some days where I'm, like, literally eating sub 2,000, but, like, yesterday I had 2,600. But I'm just like I'm in a way healthier mindset, and I'm and I'm losing weight. I'm dropping weight. Yeah. But I'm in a way healthier mindset because it's like okay, today I feel like eating a lot, so I'm gonna eat a lot. And like my metabolism is fucked. Like I used to be able to burn like 3,500 calories a day, like maintain my weight in 3,500. You gotta you probably gotta reverse, bro. You gotta either reverse or just hit a slight a little bulk and let your metabolism. I can't bulk. I'll literally kill myself, dude. That's how I was, bro. That's literally how I was. I'm not even kidding. And I I got up to 4K. No, I'm literally telling you, like, I was the same way. Like, I was like, I can't fucking bulk. I can't do this. And then him and Derek were like, dude, you got to fucking do it. You're going to be, you're going to be so happy that you did it. Yeah, but I can't, like, I can't, like, bro, I don't post on Instagram anymore. Like, bro, but you have to understand. I hate looking fat. Like, if I don't look good, if I don't have abs, you don't have to get fat. Shout out, bro. William, if you're listening to this, shout out William. He trains at Alphaly. I remember, I literally remember this conversation because I was in the bathroom. He watches my vids. I was in the bathroom and I was talking to him and, and I was like, yeah, man, like I'm really like scared to bulk. And he goes, he literally goes, no one's going to care that you get fat. We watch your shit and we like your stuff because you're you. We know that you're going to get shredded. And like literally when he said that, I was like fucking full bulk mode. So yeah. shout out William if you're watching. But yeah, that's yeah, literally, William in my life, <laughs> yeah. that's literally what he said. And the fact that he was like, so genuine and and he's not even like i wouldn't even consider him like was brown i, I, don't, I don't know, know what that was. that was i wonder if that was a dog um I, I wouldn't even consider him like brown nosing me at all he literally just said that because he was like being super genuine and like that when he said that i was like dude like you're totally right i gotta just fucking do it because the same thing ha- like the same thing goes for you is like people are still gonna watch you they think you're funny they're gonna still fuck with your shit no matter what you look like and that's where that's why we're so fortunate to have the fan base that we do is because yeah. we can we can literally do that. I yeah. mean, yeah, it helps. Like your engagement might be a little bit better when you're looking saucy as fuck, but like in terms of the fan, in terms of getting new fans, but in yeah. terms of the fans you already have, you know, the people that really fuck with you, it's like what do they care? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you got to have some faith in your fan base. It's too. not really even that. It's like it's literally just myself. Like I can't, no, yeah, I, I can't see myself. Like, yeah, I looked in the mirror this fat, morning, bro. and I was like, bro, I'm fat now. I looked in the mirror this morning, and I literally, I was you like, just pissed a like, lot of people off by saying that. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah, bro. I had a TikTok. Like, I posted a TikTok the other day, and I was like, and I was like, because I saw this TikTok that was posted in May, and it was a video of me with my shirt off, and the guy, like, came up to me. He's like, how many years have you been lifting? And I just saw it literally the other day, and I was like, and my shirt was off, and I was like, holy fuck, I look terrible. Mm-hmm. And, like, my face was broken out, chubby face, chubby here, and I was like... And I made a TikTok reacting to it. And I was like, who the fuck let me get so fat? And it was just kind of like a funny thing. And it ended up hitting the algorithm. And then people were upset. They were like, bro, stop calling yourself fat. Like you're act- you're begging for attention. But in my head, I was literally like, yo, I literally thought yeah. I looked so fluffy and so That's bad. That's the body dysmorphia, dude. Like you get a little chubbier than shredded. And you're like, oh, I'm fat. Bro, and then people I that are won't... actually fat are like, fuck you, dude. Well, yeah. dude, the thing is, is like, I can't even look at my face. Like when I get like chubbier, like right now, like I hate looking at myself. That's probably the I'm worst like, part. Because yeah. I'll see it in my face. Like my jawline gets less chiseled. Yeah. Like I look less attractive. And I'm like, yo, like I'm fucking dude, fat. The weird thing for me, I'm sorry to cut you off. But the weird thing for me is like when I got chubbier in my face, I don't notice it until I cut back down. 
No, I notice it while it happens. Yeah, see yeah. that's because I get like cheek dips. <laughs> when I'm lean, I get like yeah. cheek dips. Yeah, same. And like and like, like my... starving. Yeah. But I like, have a I have a face transformation that I haven't posted from full bulk to full color. Oh, I gotta see that. And it was post it right now. <laughs> Maybe I will. I'll put I'll put it on my story, but it was pretty. No, yeah, yeah. If you you don't realize it until you cut down, just but bite like, your cheeks when you see <laughs> sucking your cheeks a little bit. But when you Not see yourself look. like gradually it happening, you're like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, it just gets bad, and then you get in your head, and it's like a fucking terrible cycle that you can't break. I mean, it's just a body dysmorphia, bro. Everyone has that shit. Yeah. Someone said, "Do you feel you have missed out on a certain type of college life?" Well, you're it's the funny. only one that went, well, I was actually thinking about that last, last night and I was like, Hmm, do like, do I miss being in college and do I miss kind of that, you know, adventure of it? And honestly, no, I fucking love my life now and dropping out was the best thing I ever could have done in, in some the reason a lot of people look at college as kind of their golden years or like the, you know, Ah, uh, back in college, back in the good old days, is because college gives you a taste of the best parts of adult life while having the responsibilities of a, of a kid. Yeah, yeah. Your yeah. parents are still providing for you, so it's kind of like the time for you to be able to do stuff that you haven't been able to do before, back when you were in high school and a kid, but you still don't really have responsibilities. And then for most people, they get out of college, and then they have to get a real job, quote unquote. And it's like, ah, I can't do that stuff anymore. And so they reminisce on the, they reminisce on, on the quote unquote good old days. But I mean, for us, it's like we dropped out of college and it just kind of, we're, we're on college on steroids now. Yeah. You know, well, my college, like, my, like I, w I wish I, on a, I honestly wish I could have gone to like real college for a year because I went to a military school <laughs> and then I also went to a community college. So I never really had the full college, like. You went to fucking, what did you, where'd you go? Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah. But I tried, yeah, I went FGSU. to a lot of different colleges as well. So, or FGCU, right? Yeah, yeah, But I went to different colleges. Like, I used to travel We have a, a mutual there, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that, like, you probably had, like, those party days. Versus, okay, yeah. Versus me, I never did. So, I honestly wish I, could, I did go to, like, a college for a year or something. I mean, I don't know, like... Just to experience it, I mean. Yeah, yeah but dude, I that's, that's, that's that. really, that's really what people... That's really what people are talking about when they say college is so fun. Let's be real. It's They're partying, talking about drinking, partying, yeah, partying and fucking. Yeah. Yeah. And well, like what is what is partying? It's like, okay, mainly drinking and like getting to know new people, it's making a, yeah, new it's friends. A giant social thing. And and also like talking with people that are already your friends, vibing to music, etc. It's like, yeah, for some people when they get out of college, they can't really do that anymore because they got a nine to five. But it's like the only thing stopping us from doing that exact same thing and going out and having honestly way better parties is just the fact that we don't really have any interest. I was just about to say, it's the fact that we literally can do that right now every single fucking night. Like, and honestly, we can have it's going to be because I've can, been to you can go. On. Sorry, I was just going to say we can throw literal insane parties here. Yeah. Invite half of fucking Houston <laughs> and we can do that every single night. But it's the fact that we haven't. It's like we just don't want I don't to. Want, yeah, I, yeah. I, I have no interest. And in that. like when you're in college, like I was never huge into parties, but I've been to like a plenty of college parties, and it's all like, all right, who's got their fake IDs? Like, oh, careful, we can't have the cops show up, so we gotta like turn down the music, and like people getting busted for shit, and oh, who's got the alcohol? People are worried about like, can you Venmo me five bucks? That's that. That's their you know? responsibility. Like. So yeah, it's like the little five dollar Venmos and shit, and who's got their fakes? And it's like you're just scraping by in college. But at the time, it's super fun. But now it's like, bro, a, a party that we could throw. Honestly, mm -hmm. like so, it would just be fucking insane, <clears throat> and we could write it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I used to like, obviously, like my girl goes to Arizona State, and I had friends at UF, and like I went to a bunch of other colleges like Rutgers and shit. And I would like, I had the like luxury of like being able to go to other schools to like party. But like, if I'm being honest, bro, like I grew out of that shit really quick. Like, same. So it's it old. It definitely my gets first old, semester, yeah. my first semester, I was pledging. So like as a pledge, like, yeah, you get to go to parties, but like, you don't get to like party. Yeah. Or, like, right. like fucking Butler. Yeah. <laughs> just like fucking Jack, the little Italian Butler, just <laughs> giving everyone alcohol, like bartending and shit. And then the next semester, like, I actually got to enjoy, like, going out to the club, like, doing all that shit. And, like, I feel like a lot of the fun is honestly, like, it's being underage. 
like a lot of the fun and the thrill comes from, yo, I sh- I'm not allowed to do this and I'm doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not 21, but like, yo, True. look at me. Like, I'm fucking drinking with my friends. Like, and a lot of it is like, honestly, like superficial and like fake. Like it's all like social media. Like, yo, I'm at a party, but like you're just on your phone. Bro, I'm 21 right now. I've never been to a bar my whole entire life. A bar. I've been to a, like we went to the club, but I, I've never yeah. gone to a bar. No, my school was like a bar yeah. school. So like we'd all go to the bar. I mean, they're and, dingy. Like, you didn't miss out on much. Yeah. yeah. But like it, it was like my school is like a bar school. It's like Florida bars. Like there's like we'd get like the mechanical bowl and shit some nights. Like it was fun, but like you grow out of it. So like by the mid of my sophomore year, like right before Corona happened, like bro, I was done. Like I didn't go to parties anymore. Like I didn't go to the club, and then I started working security. So it was like whatever. Like after COVID, I was a security guard, but bro, like I was like yo, thank God I'm working security. I'm getting paid like fucking four hundred dollars and like fake ID slips and fucking all that shit. Yeah. And I don't have to party. Like I get to like just stand here and make money. Like I'm here. I get to talk to people, but I don't like, I'm not like drinking. I don't have to worry about how I'm getting home. I have to, I don't have to worry about like all like the childish shit, like yeah. of being at a party. Like, was, you grow out mad quick from that. There shit. was, um, I'm not going to name him, but there was an influencer who was like suit, like Sushi's Sush and James are, are fucking losers. Like they don't, they don't even go out. They don't do anything. And like that, that, that was kind of like it really showed that person's like immaturity, where it's like, bro, like I'm out here. How many followers did he have? I mean, he's got. I don't even know. I don't know. He well, he's like a, like a, I would consider him, like a micro micro influencer. Okay. It's so like not really that low, but yeah. he's yeah. But so I he yeah. I think I might know. Who yeah, you probably about. do. He was like he was like yes, yeah, so like they're fucking losers. They don't go out. And I was thinking at the time, I was thinking, yo, he's kind of right. But now I'm thinking like, bro. I'm like looking at where I'm at and yeah. where they're at, and it's just like, dude, I'm out here like, <laughs> like doing fuck. I'm doing yeah. what I got to do. I mean, and a like, lot of the times, I, I don't think about partying and shit. When yeah. I was at school and like I could have gone to the bar, a lot of times I was like editing TikToks or like trying to edit a YouTube <laughs> video because I was yeah. just like, like fucking your like, laptop like at Starbucks to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was just like I would just sit in bed and watch Netflix and like do whatever, and then like edit videos and like try to like or I'd be making videos because like the best time for me to post was like 10, 11 o'clock at night. I'd wake up in the morning and I have a million views. Like it was just like every night I'd post a video. Next morning I wake up half a million, million views, whatever. And I was like, fuck yeah, like let's go. So I was getting validated by like putting in work and like grinding towards what I wanted to do opposed to like going out and getting drunk and like forgetting what happened the night before. Or, like, yeah. The, and that's really the thing is like partying, especially like college partying. It's just, it just gets, t- you get tired of it because you're just drinking and you're having conversations like you are meeting new people, but a lot of the time they're fucking slosh too. Yeah. So they're not going to remember you. You're not really going to remember them. And sometimes you'll make like a good connection, but it's just, that's why a lot of people stop partying and the people that are still partying hard, like junior and, and senior year is kind of like, okay, those are the kids that are afraid to grow up. Yeah. But at the same time, I also think that like, if you're doing all of that shit, you're probably compensating for something else in your That's life. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of like, what are you doing? Like, what's what's going on? Why are you still doing this? Yeah. You know? And then and also, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like getting drunk and I don't like to feel out of control for myself. So, like, if I'm, like, blacked out or some shit, like, I wake up the next morning. I'm like, yo, that was fucking terrible. Like, why the fuck would I want to do that? Yeah. I'm not going to do that again. Like, I don't think I've been blacked out drunk since I was a pledge and, like, threw up all over the place was like drinking water out of the sink like yeah. a dog like yeah it was gross at least for me i like to push myself to the point where i'm about to black out and that's usually where i'm good yeah yeah because i do so i do sometimes like the uncontrollable effect because then i do funny stupid shit <laughs> i guess yeah no i mean i i like but i like to remember when the i night, drink so i don't want to black out. i just i keep drinking but i don't really i don't think i've ever blacked out i don't think i can like, like when I, you're 21st perfect. bro i still remember I mean, it's a little murky, but I remember a lot of it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that was by far the most drunk I've ever been like that. Even at Airbnb when you were wanting chicken tenders. <laughs> I remember some of it. <laughs> I remember. I think you were more drunk then. Up. I think you were more drunk no. then than you were at. I was. No, I just I I maybe because Hannah was was more taking care of you at that point. Versus and I just remember to control myself. I was like, OK, like, don't just be fucking wild. But that the night of the chicken tenders. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. Yeah. That I just said, fuck it. But I mean, it's like, what, what would you rather do? Like what sounds more fun? 
going to a party and getting really drunk and probably not feeling so hot the next day and meeting some people where like you have a good conversation with them, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Maybe you hook up with someone that versus what we can do now, which is go to a fucking Airbnb in Tulum that is like our dream house and have a vacation with all of our friends. It's like, I would rather work for that and be able to like spend my money and travel and kind of adult party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I could, I would kind of consider us like adult party or whatever. I don't know. Also, no matter how big of a school you go to, it's always just an overgrown high school. It's always like there's everyone's involved in everyone's shit. There's always drama. Especially if you're in um, Greek life. Yeah. Greek life. I dropped that shit so quick. GDI. That shit was, yeah, it was fucking annoying. It's just oversized high school. Alcohol and lifting. This is a pretty short one. Um, The way I see alcohol is that if I work out one day and then I drink a good amount that night, I have basically voided that workout for the day. So it's just eliminated. That's bro science, but it makes sense. Yeah. If I work out six days a week and I drink kind of heavy-ish two of those days, I'm really only working out four days a week because it's almost like I've invalidated two of those workouts. And the reason for that is... One, dehydration and, and like the empty calories or whatever. And two is that alcohol slows down protein synthesis Yeah, by a lot. So you're like, you're not rebuilding your muscle after your workout. Did you really even work out? That's all I have to say about That's that. Someone point. asked about that. Yeah. Everything's in moderation. We've talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, like, I mean, I still get drunk from time to time, yeah. but I work out enough to compensate for that. Um, you have to be toxic to to get girls mentality. <laughs> I mean, you have to be toxic to get toxic girls. Yeah, I was about to say it depends yeah. on the girl. Yeah. If you like, want like Is a, that the kind of girl you want to attract? If you want to have a yeah. legitimate relationship, <laughs> if you're going for a toxic girl, like you're never going to have a legitimate relationship cuz it's always going to be like, "Oh, you did something that pissed me off, so I have to piss you off," or it's going to be like, "Oh, you made me jealous, so I'm going to make you jealous." Right. Like, oh, you cheated on me, but and I'll, just negative. Yeah, like for example, one of my friends from school, like, bro, he cheated on his girlfriend probably every weekend and she knew like that he was cheating on her and then one time like she was finally like fuck this guy like i'm i'm done they broke up the next day like she got fucked by like this dude like in multiple places at a party like multiple places got caught multiple times and he was like destroyed by it and i was like bro what the fuck did you expect i was like you've cheated on her probably 15 times in the last month we've talked about this and it's Different when guys cheat and then when girls cheat. I don't know. But what I'm oh, saying is like, again. what I'm saying is like, that's a toxic okay. relationship. So like, if yeah. you want to be in a toxic yeah, relationship, yeah, no, yeah, 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 it is. Right, right, you right, act right, toxic, right, right? But that is toxic. There's no but. I shouldn't even say but. <laughs> like you're right, but um, just because you do something fucked up, this does not excuse him at all. But I'm just saying, I can, I would be in the same boat where even if I cheated on my girl if I saw her or like heard about her getting fucked by someone else, the knowledge that I cheated wouldn't void the jealousy that I would feel. No, yeah, not at all. It didn't for him either. It didn't. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like, that's an example of like being toxic. Like if you are toxic, you're going to get met with toxic shit. But like, if you're genuinely having to try and have a relationship, yeah, I mean, you're going to have a genuine relationship. Try to be toxic. Try to be toxic to a girl that, is financially secure, has her shit figured out, and has pride. She's not going to stand and for that carries shit. herself with high regard. She's just going to fucking leave you in the in the dust. She's going to be like, "Okay, oh, fuck this guy. I'll go yeah. get a real man," you know. But if you want to be toxic, you're going to attract what you put out. So you're going to attract girls that are going to ruin your life. Yo, this is completely off topic, one hundred percent. But I just want to say this so we remember. When you get your bed in your bed frame, let's move. <laughs> let's move your shit. Your into the guest room. Into the guest yeah, room. no, I was thinking about that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. What's your opinion on athletes on gear? Honestly, well, do you guys want to go first? Because I've been answering a lot of these. Well, I think most a high level, not most, but a lot of high level athletes are on gear. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say the same thing. Um, but I feel like they have to kind of limit. Bro, they, they have to like take less than optimal compounds and cycles to avoid detection so they're not like with wada but with like with wada like especially with professional sports i'm pretty sure it's like it's random but but like but like you get a notice like it's not it's not as random yeah but when i was when i was competing in the ipf it was a note it was like 
a 24 hour notice. Like you don't have much. That's why I'm saying you have to choose something with like a five hour half life. Like it's going to be a less than optimal cycle. Barsky. And personally, I mean, this kind of sounds fucked maybe, but if I'm watching professional athletes competing at the highest level, I kind of want to see them fully decked out on gear. We talked about this with Kenny. Oh, we, we did? Yeah, we talked about that. You said that. I remember you oh, saying yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah. Um, but, like, it would be entertaining to see a bunch of fucking freaks who are already UFC. genetic freaks. These guys are already genetic freaks. But then yeah. you add in that enhancedness where... Where you can take whatever the fuck yeah, you, you don't, want. you don't have to worry doesn't. about drug tests. Bro, imagine yeah. two fucking 250-pound, 9% body fat trend lords going at it in the fucking octagon bro like that would be, <laughs> that would be fucking interesting yeah. but halo, halo testing right before dude holy shit they would they would murder themselves but, or imagine just like a whole football team on trend yeah bro yeah like, but okay sick so but it also be probably like really dangerous what, yeah what sport it would be really dangerous what sport <laughs> benefits from what drugs is what you also have to ask like obviously if you're a track runner you're not going to benefit from taking cartering bro cartering, taking cartering yeah. and carnitine no, but what i'm hormone. saying is like you're not going to like if you're running track like then, what drugs? Like every single drug is acceptable. Because if I'm being honest, I think oh, a majority. You're saying what wait. drugs are like acceptable in uh, what league? Like yo, if you're playing in the, if you're in the NBA, like should you be allowed to take fucking Trend versus taking Anivar? I think or bro, if I was, anything you want. Yeah, anything you want. But this would be interesting. Like imagine they gave you a list of drugs that you could take. So like basketball, that's what I'm saying. Basketball, they only let you take cartering, GH, and. Test. Bar or something or test. Yeah, yeah, test was like always one. So like, <laughs> yeah. So it's like you, <laughs> you can always like the most you can ever take. We is sound so fucking tests. stupid. We sound so fucking stupid I don't right now, care. bro. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to see it. I want to see it happen. That would be if sick. I'm being honest. I think a majority of incredibly high level athletes, especially okay, for example, LeBron. Right? There's this very large conspiracy that like while LeBron was at the Heat was when he started to lose his hair, when he started to like play a lot better, when he started to look a lot different, and it's because his um, sports agent would go to this clinic and pick up drugs under the initials like LJ. And it's like, obviously LeBron James is his fucking initials. Like who could it have been his agents picking up this name? Like, and it's getting tracked back like eight years at this point or whatever. And people were like, well, kind of starting to make sense. Like maybe he hopped on gear then. And then like, you could see like a, a drastic difference starting from then. And it's like, you kind of see that with a lot of athletes. I mean, bro, look at like Ronaldo. That man's, that man's literally getting leaner. He's like 36 and he's, and he's years a, old. He's aging and looking better. Yeah. And, like, I mean, you can, Derek's videos, they're all, like, Messi. Lionel Messi had dwarfism, and he yeah, took growth. Yeah, he's been on HGH his whole life. Yeah, he's t he took growth to, well, he had literally had the medical condition that they, that they gave That's him. That's fair, then. Yeah. That's fair. But he's still short as fuck. It didn't help him that much. He's, like, 5'4 five, or 5'5 five, five or something like he, that. No, he's not. I'm no, sure yeah, he's, like, 5'9. No, 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 no. He's fucking short. Messi? I'm pretty sure Messi's, yeah. like, 5'8. No. So does height not matter in soccer or some shit? Uh, isn't he like it's one not of the that best it, in the it world? Does, it's not that it doesn't matter. It's, it's applied differently. So, like, if you play soccer, right? Okay, he's 5'7", so sorry. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> I thought he was 5'5". Five, five That's still shorter than I would have expected. Yeah. I would expect well, that any high-level soccer player would be, like, six foot plus. Well, you got to think it's, like, different skills. So, like, obviously, Messi's not heading the ball, but he's, like, short and fast and has a lower body center, so he can travel really, he can dribble yeah, really mm, well. Dribble. And fits between small spaces. He's more agile. Opposed to True. Ronaldo... He's taller and more of like a physical presence. So like he's going to win a lot of headers. He's better. Yeah. He has a lot of pace. He's better at dribbling just from like a different perspective of dribbling. You mm. know what I mean? Like it, it's just like how you apply that. But like soccer is like a, a sport where I don't think certain drugs would really affect it. Like obviously if you're taking trend, you're not going to be a better soccer player. Yeah. But the, if you're the taking only like things that would affect bro. it would be cartering. Cartering. You know, cartering for every sport is literally would, yeah. would, would maximize Besides your cancer. <laughs> but cartering would literally... Make every and single growth. sport, but that's the other question. Better. Is like, for example, Ronaldo's thirty six years old, right? If you're if you're in your mid thirties, like your test starts to drop already. Yeah. So why should it be? Why is it illegal for him to take tests that brings his levels back to the same age as an eighteen year old yeah. that's just starting? Well, if you're if you're because like, you're doctors, your, if you're getting your TRT prescribed, why can't you take it? If well, you're, yeah, like, they you can't. actually need it. They can't. That's like, what I'm saying. Know. So, can't. so like, that's, that's my question. It's like, what what stops them from taking 175 tests to bring them back to like because an 18 that's year old bring, test? That's going to bring you way above 18 year old tests. Yeah, that's going to get you. Like and also, TRT nanograms. and Derek's talked about this. TRT in and of itself is it gives you an edge because when you're natural, you have pulsatile test release. So like it'll spike and then it'll come down. And oh, your like balls if you don't sleep enough, more. if you don't eat yeah, enough. Yeah, exactly. But also, even if you're sleeping and eating right your test is going to be pumped out by your balls and then it'll come back down and then your balls pump out more. When you inject it, 
you're maintaining those peaks, but 24 seven and you can sleep like shit and eat like shit and whatever else and train super hard, like overtrain and your test isn't going to take a hit from it. Sounds lit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but you know, what's funny is it also improves neuro ne like your brain. You're literally going to be like more responsive and shit. So not only physical, yeah. but like mental, you're going to be well, testosterone you're be is sharper. literally like the wonder drug. Like, well, well, besides like the hair and the gyno and the acne, yeah. but yeah, but that's only well, if you no, take it a lot. It yeah, doesn't yeah. that also depend on your genetics? Like, yeah. for example, and like dose. no one in my family has ever gone bald, so it's like it's not in my genetics to like go bald. But yeah. you still could. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is like, don't I have like a less of a chance yeah, yeah, of losing yeah. my hair? You do, you yeah. Do. yeah. But gymnastics is like the one sport where, or I wouldn't say the one sport, but it's like the main sport where taking gear actually is like counterproductive. Yeah, because the more because you it weigh, adds, it right? adds body weight. It just adds muscle mass. Well, it also depends on where you take it, like how what you're lifting. Like for example, like men's gymnasts, right? Yeah, they want to have really muscular upper bodies, but like not muscular lower bodies because they pretty much have to whip that shit around. Yeah, you know I mean? but you also don't want to have a super muscular upper body, and you do want to have some muscle on your legs because I mean, if you've seen like floor routines, the amount of explosivity you need. Well, I'm like talking like men's in the, in like the thing. Like, I don't know if men's do floor. I don't, I don't know they about do, yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't know that. But like what I'm saying is like, if they're doing like the rings Iron cross, and like yeah. the horse shit where they have like the fucking, the, the, the pummel horse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That thing. Like if your legs are big, you're fucked. You got to hold Wait, so much more true. weight. Did y'all see the Simone Biles thing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that Simone Biles dropped out of the Olympics yeah. because, um, she got the twisty. She or couldn't whatever. take. She couldn't take the Adderall. She couldn't take her Adderall because Adderall is banned in J Japan, and so she couldn't take Adderall. Oh, that's so what it was. So then the whole thing was is Adderall or it's some. I don't know if it's Vyvanse or Adderall, shit. but it was is Adderall or Vyvanse or whatever a PED because when she takes it, she can focus more. So when she doesn't get, cause they spin like crazy. Well, no, yeah. It, so, so they the spin thing. and they get, and they don't, and they don't, they lose direction of where they are. But when she was on Adderall, she could easily focus and like, sh it's easier for her to like, it helps her. No, yeah. They, you know, they shut that part out of the story. Like they were just saying that she had like the twisties or whatever. Yeah. Like, so she couldn't. So Japan banned Adderall. I didn't Adderall. know that. Yeah. Japan is Adderall that. banned. So damn. Well that, I, I don't know. That gets into the whole discussion that, that we've talked about before of like, I think I think that was Simone Biles in that whole thing, but well, I'm not. You I'm know, pretty yeah. sure. Oh shit! Well, you got to get Wait, your facts. Okay, let me fact check it really quick. <laughs> well, what but I'm saying is like, so I get prescribed Adderall. Like, yeah, I but, get prescribed but I, and also I, I was gonna helps. say like ADHD. They kind of just they um diagnose that like fucking crazy. Like sometimes well, I yeah, think yeah 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 yeah. Does yeah, it yeah. level the playing field then? So if she can't focus and she has ADHD or ADD whatever, and they don't have it, her taking that Adderall kind of brings them to the same playing field right but what if she doesn't have legit legit adhd but because that's the way i feel like i was when i went into the doctors i remember it i remember going in i was like four years old and while my parents were or talking four? four or five something like that and while my parents were talking to the <clears throat> to the doctor he had a lego set in the back and obviously i'm not going to sit there alongside my parents and listen to this fucking boring doctor so i'm playing with legos in the back and I remember the doctor saying, see, this is even an example of his ADHD. He's got to be fidgeting at all times. And and now that I look back on it, I'm thinking, bro, that's just what kids do. No, like, yeah, that's, that's just, what... That's not ADHD. That's just me being a kid. That's why I was surprised when you said you were four. Because I have, so I have ADHD and dyslexia. And I didn't get diagnosed until my freshman year of high school. Because oh, really? I couldn't pay attention to class. And not only that, like, so you know how, like, we used to read, like, and they'd be like, oh, you're, like, M level or you're, like, L level. And you're like, you'd read like with your teacher in middle school or some shit. I don't know. So I don't remember where that. I was, it was like, you'd read a, you'd read a book and then based off like your speed and the amount of words you messed up, whatever, they'd give you like a grade through like A to Z. Okay. And I was always like four years behind. Fine. Like I could barely read. Yeah. And like, no matter how hard my mom tried to help me learn, cause she's a teacher and shit. Like I could not read. But it was bad. But also just and real quick. they were quick, like, yeah, this kid has fucking fucked dyslexia. They say that, they say that Adderall, if you don't have ADHD is an upper, but when you do have legit ADHD, it like calms you down and makes you focus. Yeah. I'm like, right. I'm like a zombie when I take that shit. Dude, for me, it's the opposite. I, when I take Adderall, I get, it's an upper, I get very alert and like, I'm def, it's definitely not zombie. I, de it's definitely not nah, a downer. So I'm just it's like, like staring at, do shit. I have legit ADHD? I don't know. When I take Adderall, it functions like a stimulant. All right. Listen, Simone okay. Biles, 
This is from Insider. Um, Simone Biles. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. Where was it? I lost it. Oh, okay. So, so it says athletes were permitted to apply for permission to bring otherwise banned drugs. This applies mostly to the Dextra, whatever, or Adderall and other stimulant drugs, but it doesn't appear that um, that this applies to Biles' regimen. So what I think happened was she didn't. Um, she didn't go through the proper steps to like say that she takes it. And so that, that oh. so then, so then she got in trouble. And so she, she like mental health issues or Damn. something. So she came out with a statement. I have ADHD and I've taken medication for it since I was a kid. Please know I believe in a clean sport, have always followed the rules and will continue to do as fair play is critical to sport and is very important to me. Oh, so, so she didn't like declare that she I, was taking how Adderall. the fuck are you going to be the most important gymnast on the fucking team and, and they don't none, fix that none of your coaches none of your handlers are going to be like oh by the way you have to go through these steps to bring your adderall no yeah that's why so the analysis of this of this thing so the three points are so biles withdrew from the olympics um she takes adhd medication that is not permitted in japan but an exemption likely allowed her to bring it so that was like the that's like the key topics mm -hmm. of the article so what i assume happened is she didn't go through the proper steps in saying that she she takes it so this is like the superstar gymnast later said she was experiencing the twisties which caused disorientation because she, i don't think she had her medication yeah. so she wasn't allowed to take it damn so there it is the fact check of the simone biles damn um all right this is the last topic that we have written down but Dosage on steroid cycles, like leaving gains on the table if you plan on competing soon. Because I talked about this a little bit. And I mean, the way that I put it, I kind of already covered it in my YouTube video, but it's like, I don't want to take, very simply, I don't want to take a dose of gear that's going to affect my quality of life, even if it means I'm leaving gains on the table. And also something that's going to like, you know, obviously as you push dosages higher and add in different compounds, you're sacrificing your health too. So I want to sacrifice my health the least and sacrifice my quality of life basically not at all. Even if that means I might only be, you know, making 50% of the gains that I could make on like a quote unquote proper cycle. That's the way I see it. I feel like at the end of the day, like if you're lifting for aesthetics and like to look a certain way or like for bodybuilding and shit, how how big do you really want to get before yeah, it's how like much gear ew, do you really like, need? Bro, you yeah. look fucking gross. Yeah. Like, like, bro, yeah, don't get me wrong. For example, big Rammy, right? Dude's impressive, but I would never want to look like that. Never want to look like that. Like, dude, yeah. no, don't dude, be wrong. Or like the Nick Walker. Yeah, the Nick, fact that Nick you can Walker, put that much muscle on is really fucking impressive. I think Nick Walker looks grosser than Big Rami. Really? Because his bro, like your calves, veins his get calves disgusting. veins, True. his his shin veins are so absurd. It's like varicose veins. He's a young LA athlete, so I'm not even gonna like. I can't talk shit about him. He's fucking massive, but he yeah. just looks. He's just in wolf. terms of what you'd want to look like. Yeah, not there. Yeah, no. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that like, if you're bro right now, obviously you look great. Could you look better in your own eyes? Yeah, sure. And win your show? Yeah, but like, how much muscle do you really need to put on to do that? Like, if That's you stepped on stage right now, you, you'd probably you'd win. Well, no, not well, not yeah. classic. Okay, an amateur show, show, an amateur show, show, a local amateur show. You oh, yeah. fucking blow it out of the water. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What That's I'm saying different. is also like, okay, right? You're what five nine? Yeah. And what's the height class that you would be between? Five nine to five ten. I think. And like, what's shorter than five nine? Five eight. <laughs> well, no. What know. I'm saying is like I the think glasses. It goes up every two inches or inch. So if or you something. slumped, if you slumped shit. down a little bit, like if you like didn't stand up. Oh my god, yeah, I'm so standing up straight. Yeah, you'd be in the lower height class, and then you'd still need less to to put on less muscle, and be a, a lower weight. So like, yeah, but you want to maximize your height yeah. because you, so you, you want to maximize the muscle you can put on. Yeah. Well, because, no. What I'm saying is like you would be at the very top of that height class and weight class for like that class, opposed to like being at the bottom of the next one. No, True. but well, yeah. You want to you so want to be shorter. You want to be shorter in your specific class because if your weight limit is say two hundred forty pounds, yeah, you're gonna look bigger. Let's say the let's say the class is from six foot to six two. I don't know if that's even a class. You're gonna look bigger at two hundred forty pounds if you're six foot than if you're six two. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, bro, I'm not trying to look. I'm not trying to be six two. I'm not trying to be six foot. Right. I'm six one. I'm not trying to be six one. 240 on stage like i know that would be I, like it's funny that's in my actually, opinion that would look whack that's what chris bumstead did is he 
I think he was like a legit. Didn't he say that he used to claim six one, but he was actually six foot? I think he said that. Yeah, and then you, he did. You, you were the one that told me that, so I don't know if that's true. I have, I've never heard that in my life. Wait, you told me. I don't think I told you that. Yeah, you did. I did. It didn't just pop into my head. You were saying that Chris Bum said used to. He said that he used to claim six one when he was actually six foot. I, I remember I, I remember you telling me, but anyway, maybe I did. Regardless, who knows? I read some bodybuilding um, forum interview that he did, and apparently, and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. He used an inversion table for like the months leading up to the Olympia to temporarily like extend his spine, and he measured in at six foot one and a half, which put him into like the in an upper height class which added onto his weight limit oh, so that he could, he could be that big. Yeah. Now that he's officially on paper, six foot one and a half, it increased the amount by like 10 pounds of muscle or something like that. So now he's allowed to be bigger on stage and then he just fucking wiped the floor. Yeah. I mean, well, what I'm saying is like how much, like, okay, for you, for example, how much muscle do you really need to put on? Do you think for what an amateur show for your, for your goal, like to compete? Like, are you going for your I don't pro even card? Know like, what, you want to win a pro card? Like, that's that would be goal? sick. But is that your goal? Like, is that what you're working towards? To where it's like, this is my goal. I'm going to give everything to give my this goal. Pro card. My goal is to compete and then reevaluate my goal. Yeah. So <laughs> as of right now, what are you going to put on? Like five, six pounds with your cycle? Six, seven yeah. pounds? Yeah. Dude, don't fucking triple the cycle that you would need. Put that shit on way exactly. quicker, but risk your health. Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're not fucking. Yeah. At the end of the day, like your goal is not to look like big disgusting writing. not not yeah. that it's not impressive but like right it's, it's not in my eyes that's not appealing like i'm trying to go for like jeff side kind of look you know yeah. what i mean like john skywalker apparently like jeff Paul. side's way bigger in person yeah no, i that's heard what, that he that's is what too. said but like he was like this guy's fucking massive but what i'm saying is like i'm trying to go for like the aesthetic lean but like full muscle bellies looks good like yeah can take your shirt off like there's not like just like veins like curling around your bicep and like right no like, yeah no but you know the thing I mean? is like when people see maybe they see me there's some people that might see me and think that i'm too big because they're seeing me on instagram like with a pump fucking getting the angle flexing super hard but then when you see me without a pump maybe haven't eaten that much food and i'm relaxed and i don't have the right angle and lighting it looks way more aesthetic than when you see it on Instagram where it almost looks grotesque. But, it, yeah. but dude, you know at I the mean? same time, like, okay, this is how I look at it, right? I'm not training to look good in the gym. I'm training to look good outside exactly. of the gym. Like, I'm trying to go to the beach and look fucking really good. Without yeah. a pump. Without a pump. Like, I'm not, okay, so if you're in the gym, obviously you're going to look the best that you're ever going to look. The in biggest, the gym, the biggest, the biggest right? Yeah. But, like, I aesthetically pleasing, like, you're going to look the best outside I of look the, the best gym. At right before I go to bed <laughs> yeah dude, that happens most, with me too I'm the most full but I'm like the same leanest obviously yeah and so I'm the most full my muscles like are so round and shit. yeah they're like right after sex because all the blood flow dude, that's that's, that's what it is that's, for me like, yeah, I'll get like ab veins and shit yeah. after having sex like, like no matter after what body I eat, percentage. I've already eaten all my calories and then I have sex bro I go in the bathroom I'm like holy fuck like, yeah. you're just like yo like, let me get an Instagram selfie yeah dude 100%. like I look fucking nuts but yeah that's what I'm saying like is your like I feel like your goal is definitely to like look good at day to day life, not like right now it is, yeah. Yeah. But it's like who knows? I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say, Oh, here's what I wanna do in five years. Like I doubt back to Chris Bumstead, I doubt when he first started lifting, he knew, okay, I wanna step on the fucking Mr. Olympia stage. You know? Makes sense. It just slowly evolved into that. So am I saying that's what I wanna do? No. But I mean maybe it could be cool. And sometimes I think, damn, that would be sick. I don't know if I have the like genetics to get there, but we'll see. And I need to compete first and then evaluate it and then see what I want to but do from there. That's also different. Chris Bumstead doesn't look disgusting. You know what I mean? He looks oh, fucking okay. insane. I mean, but I, like, he I, looks like, I personally agree with you, but I didn't think that you'd say that. No, I don't think that he looks, I don't think he looks gross at all. I think he looks oh, okay. like, insane. Like, he's just like, holy shit. Like, that's like, like God the, status. He keeps the classic look. That's what I'm he saying. Keeps the like, classic look. He the keeps 90s, the classic look. The, like the the Arnold era, they weren't veiny. They were pretty yeah. like flush. Yeah, they were soft. But Chris like, doesn't look like that. You know what I mean? Chris does. Chris doesn't look like what you see now, where it's like giant bubble guts and like. Okay, that's open. That's what I'm saying. Like I think that that's the open the part forever. is like 
That's out of the question forever. Brody, I, never I think look Chris like is like opens girls. I don't even think. Well, yeah. I think that Chris is at the you would the think point Chris where he's is too fine. big. Yeah, it will for my f- goal physique. Chris yeah. is too big. I wouldn't want to look like Chris. I think that Chris looks insane, and it's also still appealing. Yeah, but it's like I the, just I agree. it's at the I upper agree. level of appeal. It's, like yeah, the, yeah, it's definitely the upper level of appealing, but it's still appealing. It's like that's respectable and appealing, and it's like holy shit, like this guy's like a god. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, Mr. Olympia. But what I'm saying is, like, for me, my goal, although I respect that and look at that, yeah. that's not what I want to look like. That's not my True. goal, but I respect that, and I think he looks great. When it gets above him, do I respect it? Yeah, but I don't think it looks great. Right. But then again, I, who am I? I'm not a fucking judge of the bodybuilding stage. I'm not that person. I'm not whatever. I'm just a fucking guy on Instagram and fucking TikTok. You know what I mean? I just hope they don't. YouTube. I hope they don't. I hope Classic doesn't keep getting bigger. Well, that's even, the problem, even dude. Now, look at men's physique. Even now, it's a little too big compared to what I would personally want. But it's still like, okay, it's not like too, too big. But if it keeps going up, like you're saying about men's physique, it's like, okay, fuck, this doesn't look good anymore. Bro, if you look like four years ago, who would have won a pro card at men's physique level compared to like who's yeah. not winning pro cards now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, yo, what the fuck? Like yeah. this person looks insane four years ago and they're not even in, and they just won and they're not even in contention now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's the problem. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's always like, and then it's also gets to a problem with like, for example, like Anthony Mantello, right? He is like 184 on stage or whatever. And something the, like that. And the people he was competing against were a lot, like two something yeah. based off his height. Like they're only going to get bigger. So he now needs to chase them. Yeah. And it's like, then you get to the point where like, he's going to risk his health and he's going to like risk that because that's his goal. And he wants, he has to put on that aside. So he doesn't have the choice. And it's like, I think that bodybuilding now is heading towards like a really unhealthy route. Cause it's like, now you have the younger kids that are starting that need to take more and need to get bigger and need to do it in a shorter amount of time to reach it. Cause who the fuck wants to be competing at 35 years old? If that's true, you know what I mean? Like, I want to look good. I want to look good now. Not Yeah. yeah. If I'm going to compete, it's going to be like when I'm like 23. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, if I'm going to compete, I'm going to be, like, 23, 24, maybe 25, but I'm not going to fuck it. I don't want to be 30 years old, like, oh, shit, I need to starve myself for the next 16 weeks to step on stage. Yeah. Like, no, I'm going to want to have a kid. Like, I'm going to want to, like, go on vacation and have good times. I'm not going to want to be fucking on prep. Yeah. It's funny. I think Jay Cutler won Mr. Olympia in his mid-30s. I'm pretty sure. But at the, I mean, I'm not obviously I wouldn't want to look like that, but it's yeah. with open, you kind of need to be older because you literally need the time to be able to put on that amount of tissue. Well, yeah, he was like 300 so and something pounds in the off season at like five, yeah. six. Yeah. No, Jay Cutler is Jay. Cut, I think Jay Cutler's five, nine. No, Jay Cutler. No, maybe, maybe written down on Google. He's like five, seven, dude. Jay Cutler bodybuilder. Bro, I'm about I, to pee my pants. Should I just wait? Yeah, just wait. We're about, he's I've been f- waiting. Said, Wikipedia says 5'9". Yeah, no shot. Jay Cutler's like 5'10". Oh, no, it says 5'10". No way. But yeah, he's like six, He's like 300 pounds in the offseason. Damn. Which is like, would you, would you ever want to be, would you ever have to walk around at 300 pounds? Like, no, but I do, th- I do think that you have to, um, I think that's probably legit because you have to get officially measured at the event to put, like they, they take down your height and weight at the Olympia. So yeah, maybe all that weight compressed him over the years because I think he just looks shorter because he's so fucking just big. Like you're yeah. not going to look like tall longevity longevity wise. Wise. Go. Yeah. Longevity wise. I would never want to look that big or be that big. Cause I know how terrible it is for your health. Yeah. I'm just looking at pictures of Jay Cutler now. Dude I want to get to the fucking point nuts. Yeah. I want to get to the point where it's like still healthy and I look great and I'm not sacrificing like, Oh shit. I'm just shaved 30 years off my life to look like this. And here, this is him next to Arnold. And I think Arnold's like 6'1 or something. Oh, I guess. Or maybe. 6'2. I thought Jay Cutler was like 5'6. Wait, how tall? Well, he's shrunken now. But when I he was going to say, because I watched the Jesse James West video with him. And I was yeah, like, yeah, 6'2. Arnold was 6'2. Yeah. I mean, Arnold's like 70 something, right? Or no. But then it's saying here that he's six foot. I don't fucking know. Everyone lies about their height. So it's like you get fucking a million different answers. Yeah. But you were watching what? The Jesse James West video with Jay Cutler. Like, I think Arnold looks super aesthetic here. That is, like, golden Yeah, aesthetic. super golden. But the I don't think is, that you can get better than that, though. Like, in my sucks, opinion. What sucks is that wouldn't win a classic show now. Yeah, because the he's legs, not he's The not legs not aren't dry. big enough. 
Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. The legs aren't big enough, and he's not, like, dry enough. Yeah, but I don't think tr- giant tree trunk legs are aesthetic. Yeah, I don't really either. I, I think like, that I like cut, the way his legs look here. Cut, toned, like, looks good. But, like, what body fat percentage is that? Like, 8%? I mean, on stage, he was probably 7 but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, dude, if you but now they're if getting you stepped like on five, stage, like four percent, if you shit, stepped and on super stage, dry, it, you stepped on stage at seven percent, like you're not even in like in the in the looks. Oh yeah, no, nobody's looking 100%. at you, hundred percent. Which I think is fucked. I mean, I, I'm I just think, saying for your perspective, yeah, do you really want to be that that. No, like, like if I, I could, I don't have the genetics. Almost nobody does to ever look like Arnold. But if you did, I think that's like the best physique ever. Yeah, dude. Like he looks sick, and it just to me it sucks that they have a division called classic, and, and it doesn't look like and him. the greatest classic bodybuilder ever wouldn't win that division because yeah. he wouldn't be nearly big or dry enough. I agree. Or like I think like a Frank Zane, like Frank Zane. I would love to look like Frank Zane. I would love to look so like Frank Zane. So aesthetic, yeah, dude. That is like my goal. Yeah, is to look like Frank Zane. Honestly, or like, do you know uh, Sadiq Hevzovic? Yeah. I think his physique is it is. is very aesthetic as well. It is. Look, look at that vacuum, dude. Yeah, dude. It looks insane. Look at his chest striation like that. I know. But anyway, enough about this. I'm waiting yeah. for Sush to get back because I'm about to wrap. I'm about to wrap this up. Bro. What's up? Yeah, I got a pee too. What happened? I might have to pay you, homie. My dog chewed up your shoelace. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh no. And it's the the fucking because they got they broke through the barricade. And this. No, it's just a shoelace. Like, there's no more. There's no more end of it. The plastic thing. There's no more. Here. Fucking Milo, dude. No, it was Cal. It was Cal. Yeah, I, I held up the shoe and Cal's ears fucking slid back. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. So Yummy we had like shoe. a barricade so the dogs wouldn't come to the door and cry. And their shoes were over there. They they went through the barricade and and like I noticed his shoe was knocked over and I was like I didn't. I was like I put the shoes up. I'm pretty sure. And then. Yeah. I, Touch a shoelace because there was no more. No, frayed. There's no more plastic thing. It's not even frayed. It's like sucked off. And there's like, oh, oh damn. Yeah, it's like literally. The cl- it looked like you literally like surgically removed the plastic. Damn. Thing. He must have just sucked it off. What a dick. Because he knew that was fucked. As soon as you held it up, he yeah. was like, ah, yeah. His ears. Up. His ears went straight back. And we could get the collar. <laughs> 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 Fucking seizure. I'm playing. Don't don't. Use yeah. <laughs> All right, boys. It's been real. It's been a good podcast. But yeah. We're gonna go eat. I've had like. 400 calories today, so... I'm lucky. I wish I only ate that much. Oh, well, I'm hungry as fuck. Yeah, so. we talked for a while. Yeah, we did. All right, guys. Um, Anabar Restock, if you guys are still watching, make sure you guys go over that right now because it's dropped. So go do that. And yeah, that's all I can really say. That's our sponsor for the video. Yeah, and they do... La- like, Anabars last a while when they stock. Like, they do big restocks. So even if you're watching it now, even if it's been restocked for a few hours, it's there's few definitely weeks. still... If you're watching yeah. this a week later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's still definitely some in stock. So thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.